he's that classic guy who's going to go to a contender. He's going to go to a playoff team, you'd think. And I think a lot of people are probably, you know, they understand the scouting report, but they're not overly familiar with his game. So if I'm going to give, not you, but the people at large some homework, keep an eye out for him. Yeah, and and there's, or, or do you look at a John Klingberg who yeah. gives you more offense? That's and you right. also have to look at, you know, I mean, these guys aren't in good situations this year. So totally. you have to kind of look at that in, in both cases. So that's the kind of thing your pro scouts are, are looking at. And this year, right now, what with the third best record in the NHL thereabouts, mm -hmm. like you're talking about those are first round picks like Tampa Bay gave up for Brendan Hagel. Yep. So you're, you know, you're, you're, if you're giving up a first round pick, it's 28th, 29th, something like that, which is a whole lot different than when it's, you know, 17, 18, 19, or what have you. So yeah, there's, so they're, they're, so it's not. And, and Matthew Nice, man, is he going to win the Rookie of the Year and the MVP? He better. That's uh, <laughs> you know that that's that's the other careful one. Again, you 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 obviously it has to be something pretty spe special, and it would have to be something with term. It would cannot be a hired gun in that regard for those. And I think we all understand that. Yeah, and that's why Timo Meyer is the other interesting name because, and you know, I, if you're listening to this, you know all the minutia of it. He is a RFA at the end of the season. He has a $10 million qualifying offer. So there's potentially a world where you bring him in for the run and you flip him. Now, obviously, that's a way more complicated situation and people will know you need to flip him or move one of your other guys. So it's not necessarily an ideal situation. But yeah, I think that's another name that people are obviously, obviously watching. A trade deadline less than a month away. March 3rd, Gordo and I will uh, have you covered 1-3 to three on the fan uh, that day. But right now, you're not going anywhere because the Leafs are in action tonight, finally back from their way, way too long layoff. On the road in Columbus tonight, back at home at Scotiabank against the Blue Jackets tomorrow. We will continue to get you set for the first half of the double dip. It is Leafs Nation pregame on Sportsnet 590 of the Fan and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. Searching online for questions about your health isn't always healthy. You'll look up something simple like, why do I keep getting eczema? And whoosh, you're hurtling through an internet rabbit hole. Six hours later, you've poured through every single online message board dedicated to every skin condition that's ever existed. Or you could just talk to a pharmacist. Stop going down internet rabbit holes and start connecting to care. Visit Ontario.ca slash your health to find pharmacists, nurses, and answers and see all the ways we're helping you connect to care. Paid for by the Government of Ontario. That is the sound of a real glass in your hand, filled with complimentary beverages while you're comfortably seated on your Porter Airlines flight. Add in the crunch of your free premium snacks, and it's all sounding pretty good. It's nice to be treated so well on an all-economy flight. Every seat on every flight, including yours. Look at flyporter.com. Porter. Actually, enjoy economy. Sitting at home wondering how to save money? Why not start with your windows and doors? That's smart thinking. Ecotech windows and doors can help. With EcoSmart technology, our latest product lines are all Energy Star, which means you'll save on your energy bill. And right now, we pay the tax for you or you don't pay until 2024. Now that's smart thinking. Quality and comfort you can trust and afford. You'll see the difference right away with EcotechWindows.ca. Learn more at EcotechWindows.ca.
try, try all the time, try as hard as you might, you've got to keep your wits about your mind, you sure can turn a phrase, but can you try to turn the page, and try for better days? Try for better days Try for better days Gather all of your strength Remind me of your cause Gather all your armies All your forces Or your lost You sure can use them At least can't you try To turn the page with us your tv truly local things seem to be getting back to normal for these connoisseurs now you can go and taste or drink some fine vintages again ah a return to normalcy for these two lovebirds now you can finally have that specialty drink your favorite bartender is known for. Pace yourself, though. It's been a while. Now you can hit the town again, sharing stories together from the crazy year we've all had. But you still can't do that. Online betting is booming. Booyah! But you could also lose. There is risk with online gambling. And that's a reality nobody's shouting about. Learn about safer play at knowtherisks.ca. is a Your TV sports presentation.
fans, I'm Jessica Osterhahn welcoming you to the Garden City at Meridian Centre in St. Catharines for the second stop on the PWHBA's secret Dream Gap Tour OHL Showcase. The two leagues have teamed up to highlight some of the greatest female hockey players in the world, including 44 Olympians. The tour kicked off in Peterborough this morning with the Peets hosting teams Scotiabank and Harvey's, but tonight the Niagara Ice Dogs share with us the privilege of bringing you tonight's game action against teams at Adidas and Sonnet. Liz Knox and Isabel Germain have more on the matchup and of course the call for tonight's game. Ladies, take it away. Thanks, Jessica, and thank you to St. Catharines for having us. We're so excited to be here. We made it in traffic through the 401, and we're so excited to get this game underway. Team Adidas, Team Sonnet just behind us, and we're going to get going with the players. Fresh off of her NHL All-Star appearance, it's her first game since being in Florida last week. It's Sarah Nurse. Yeah, I'm sure she's still acclimatizing to the weather, but Sarah Nurse certainly put on a show down at the NHL All-Star weekend. She is second on this team in shots on goal, only behind Kendall Coyne Schofield, who's out this weekend due to injury she's highest in expected goals and we're looking for her to put the offense up for team adidas well not yet an nhl all-star but an all-star on the noxie and cac show this week on your podcast and that's abby rock she's going to make a huge difference for team sonnet today yeah uh, this is a player that is just becoming so likable not only on the ice but off the ice as well and as you mentioned we had her on the podcast earlier this week um, she's been fantastic offensively for Team Sonnet. She's got 13 points in 11 games. She leads the team in chances off the cycle and in the slot. So she's, you know, very familiar with the front of the net, and I'm sure that's what we'll find here tonight. Well, you mentioned earlier today the standings really don't play it justice in between these two teams. A couple points that could have been the difference for Team Sonnet. Yeah, Team Sonnet unfortunately gave up two losses in overtime early in the season. Now, if those two losses had actually transpired into wins, they'd be just two points behind this Adidas team so still anybody's game and I know that Sonnet is looking for a big push here in the second half leading into the championship weekend. All right well we've got team Adidas team Sonnet again team Adidas lucky maybe today with a loss from Scotiabank they're still going to hold on to that second place what can we expect from them? Yeah that number two three so, uh, seat between team Scotiabank and team Adidas has just been such a tight race. Team Adidas here is looking to broaden that gap get on the board early and keep that lead against this very strong team Sonnet. We're ready to get underway in St. Catharines for the second game of four in our OHL showcase. We're going to send it down to the public address announcer. It's Rob Mahood. Data and analytics company that provides decision-making insights to more than 22 leagues worldwide. Megan has won multiple awards for staff leads, including the Niagara Entrepreneur of the Year Award and Rogers Next Bid Idea in Sports finalist. Welcome once again, Megan Chaika. Could both captains please report to center ice for tonight's ceremonial puck drop? Thank you once again to Megan Chaika. Now fans, please stand if you're able, and please remove your hats for the singing of the American and Canadian National Anthems, presented by IG Wealth Management. IG Wealth Management, helping Canadians achieve true financial well-being. Tonight we welcome St. Anthony Catholic School to sing the American and Canadian National Anthems.
Once again, CD. All right, Niagara has come out in style and in numbers. We have the largest ticket attendance tonight that we've ever had all year long. So we're excited to get underway. Izzy Duran, Liz Knox, we thank you for joining us on your TV. Let's get started with our goaltenders. We've got one of your favorite goaltenders in net, but we'll start with Maddie Rooney, number 35 for Team Adidas. Yeah, Maddie Rooney putting up some good numbers this year. She's played five games with 147 shots average and she's 2-3-0 on the season so she's looking to add to those stats of course Team Adidas is carrying four goaltenders this year so a very competitive position and she's looking to inch her way into a starting spot heading into that championship weekend and not to play favorites <laughs> but your friend Erica Howe making the start today for Team Sonic well yes there's just too many good things to say about Howie in the time that I have here but an incredible person an incredible athlete and she's 0-2 on the season but you know she's been putting up good stats she's got uh, nine goals against on an 87 save percentage and she can really steal a game so I'm happy to see her get the start here in front of this fantastic crowd in St. Catharines as you hear the crowd buzzing already well, you hear them, and it's our two players to watch who are going to start things off. It's Sarah Nurse and Abby Rock. Once again, it's the OHL Showcase. You're watching the Secret Dream Gap Tour on your TV and underway now as Team Adidas wins the draw. Amanda Kessel making her second tour appearance. First tour in Collingwood at the beginning of the month. And a big piece to this Adidas lineup today. There she is with the puck now. She's got Nurse in front of the net. Thompson lays out to block that pass. Now Jenner evades the D at the blue line. He's going to skate it in. And they're offside as Alexa Vasco will talk about her, but making her homecoming debut in front of a hometown crowd in St. Catharines today. Yeah, as you said, Izzy, uh, a bit of a homecoming here for Brianne Jenner. She spent the first nine or 10 years of her minor hockey career actually playing here in St. Catharines, although her hometown is listed as Oakville. So I know she's happy to get back in front of this crowd and uh, put on a quite the show here for us today. She stops the puck on the bench there, will reset in the neutral zone. Get her first appearance of the All-American lineup for Team Sonnet. This is a line that they want big things from. Struggling Team Sonnet, we mentioned last showcase, they've got the new warm-up jerseys, the Sonnet Slappers. They've done a few things to really just trying to get the chemistry going on this team, trying to get a couple more points on the board. We'll see what they have today. There's Hannah Brandt now, takes taken down in the slot. Team Adidas finds O'Neal, who's the puck up to Stacy. Back to O'Neill, her shot blocked. Jincy Dunn playing up a little bit. Keeps the puck alive for Team Adidas. Moves it over to O'Neill, who's going to send it back for Stacy on the near side. Stacy a little too far ahead for the shot. Hannah Brandt will pick it up. Send it over to Knight on the far side. Hillary Knight also in appearance at the NHL All-Star Skills Competition. We had five players in attendance as Sonnet turns the puck over Donovan in the neutral zone. Sends it in on Howe. Buckles now below the goal line. Looking for Skarupa. Now to Brown. Up to Schneider. Gets a piece of it to avoid the icing call as Mickelson has pressure from Vasco. They move the puck to the far side. Quickly getting rid of it is Gribbins. Gribbins played at the University of Guelph, not far from St. Catharines. Yeah, one of just, uh, I want to say two or three maybe youth sport athletes that we have here in the PWHPA, just a testament to their hard work and dedication to play among you know, the best players in, in the world. It's been a consistent presence in the Adidas lineup so far this season. Here's a turnover by Sarah Nurse. It's got Kessel going to the net. Tries to center the pass. It hits off a skate. Leslie's going to pick up the loose puck. Moves it up to Rock. Abby Rock now. Trying to get around LaRock. It's a pass off, but floats over to Sarah Nurse. Back the other way. Quick shot by Potomac. That's over the net. Down to Nurse below the goal line. At the hash marks now. She cycles down low to Potomac. In the middle for Fast. 
Scott Stacy in front, but they can't get the shot. Leslie now with the loose puck, trying to clear it out. O'Neill with speed. Can't handle it at the blue line. Rebecca Leslie back. Good pressure by Potomac on the back check. O'Neill trying to get away from pressure. Brantho had a good stick on it. That'll force Maddie Rooney's first save of the game. Yeah, both teams kind of taking their time to get into this a little bit. We see a great job here by Team Sonnet, you know, forcing that play up the wall. And a little bit of juggle there. Good force turnover. Hannah Brandt comes through. And, you know, she, unfortunately that she didn't get that call in the play, but she's creating offense for herself. And as I say, both teams seeming just to try to get their feet wet a little here in the first period. And uh, we'll see them settle in as we near the halfway mark. Another Oakville, Ontario native, Kristen O'Neill, played her first U18 championship with Team Canada in this building in St. Catharines. And she's been a part of the national program ever since. I remember actually attending that game uh, to watch Coach Brittany Smith as she was behind the bench for that U18s. Here's O'Neill with best play. makes no mistake that one in behind how and before i could finish my thought on how impressed i was by her speed at that young age of 16 you see her do it again o'neill with a fast break just to pick up that loose puck and vespa the hamilton native with a great drive to the net she goes to hard to the net with her stick on the ice o'neill makes no mistake finding the tape she's able to just shelf that one over how you can see the sun at bench looking they might have been looking for an icing call on that one. Might be why Andy Hart kind of let go instead of putting pressure on O'Neill there. But do play double IHF rules. You got to beat to the dot. Normally it's on the inside of the dot, so they might have a case. We'll have to ask some questions maybe in the intermission about that one. Yeah, and that, that race icing is uh, really critical for defense and goaltenders to keep that open communication because as we've seen here today and in our game previous of Peterborough, some of the offense is quite speedy, so they like to get, on the, get a jump on that puck and try to wave the icing to maintain the offense. Regardless, it's going to be Vespa who gets the first one for Team Adidas. And we'll see how Team Sonnet responds. Fast now, moves the puck to Kessel. She tries the backhand pass, return. It's taken away by Potomac, quick shot. That one goes wide. Kessel again at the hash mark, cycles down low. Picked off by Thompson. Now over to Fast in the slot. She's got Potty by herself, and there it is for Kessel. Second stop, second goal for Amanda Kessel. Showcase Amanda Kessel has been tasked with a very hard task of filling the shoes of Kendall Cohen Schofield, who's out due to injury. You see on that play, she's really stepped up to that role, wearing number 28. She just finds that quiet pocket on the back door. Great job by Renata Fast to get that puck towards the net. And of course, we've seen the silky hands of Sarah Potomac time and time again. She's able to corral that puck. She knows that Kessel's on the back door slides it to her and she's got the wide open cage to make this a 2-0 game early. Sarah Nurse right back to work. Gets that puck on how She'll settle things down. We've seen this all day long. Two defenders scored in this morning's game and we're not a fast you know, jumping up in the play, staying involved in the play even when they lost the puck in the corner and creates all that offense in the slot. I think it's one of the huge assets that these defense bring to the, all four of these PWHPA teams. They're all incredibly offensive and they've got the speed to recover in time as well. They're well supported by their forwards who can recognize when the D has jumped in the play. And as you said, I mean, we see those defense up in the, in the blue paint more than we're used to. Well, once again, Team Sonnet finds themselves with a hole to climb out of. Jenner centering a pass. Back to the points. Andy Hart will keep it in. Sends it down low for Rock. Dunn gets there first, rims it around the corner. Sent back towards Rooney. Now Rock. Centering pass to Leslie doesn't make it. It'll clear the zone as Brown and Zandy Hart exchange passes. Zandy Hart jumping up in the play. It's one on four as her teammates are changing. They'll send the All-American lineup out as Buckles will chase the puck down in her own end. 
puts the brakes on to avoid the forecheck. Now over to Brandt. Brandt trying to get the puck to Hillary Knight in the slot. She stopped, but she'll get it back below the goal line, fighting Megan Mickelson. Now Willoughby. Another one with a ton of speed gets around Buckles. Willoughby with the shot rebound in front. And Donovan couldn't get a stick on it. Knight's going to clear it out. Avoids the ice and call. Grupa got a stick on it at the far blue line. Now Knight will pick it up at the hash marks. Trying to get around the D. She can't. Now Curlette leaves it for Kessel. Kessel over to Dostler. They're going to be offside just before she gets that shot off. And once again, we want to thank the crowd here in St. Catharines. We get a good look here at Willoughby just chipping the puck behind that Sonnet player. She's looking for that off pad shot. And as you mentioned, Sam Donovan just unable to get a handle on it. I believe she was on her backhand, which makes her a difficult rebound, but still a great opportunity on that by Caitlin Willoughby. Trying to get the crowd going here in the building, but we want to thank the fans for coming out. Almost 4,000 plus tickets sold for this matchup between Team Adidas and Team Sonnet. And as we mentioned, the most tickets sold so far at a PWHPA game this season. So we thank you for supporting. And we hope to continue to see the support from the OHL markets. We're going to be in Barrie tomorrow morning and Kitchener tomorrow night. So we hope to see more of you there as we'll get a nice thing call against Team Sonnet. They'll be forced to stay on the ice. They've been out there for too long, though, Liz, so they won't be too tired. Yeah, I believe Claire Thompson is trying to make the case that uh, it was off a Sonnet stick, but the officials have a little chit-chat, and they'll have a face-off just to the right of Erica Howe. Basco wins the draw. Thompson now battling for it on the boards. Moves it over to Kogan. Kogan with the long pass. Looking for Schneider. It's going to be another icing call against Team Sonnet. I think, I think Team Sonnet is just looking to simplify a little bit here. I mean, they're a team that's not traditionally known for their chances off the rush. They're looking to possess the puck in zone and really tighten up that D zone. I think that's been a take-home message from head coach Laura McIntosh is just protecting the house and limiting opportunities uh, on their sonnet net we've mentioned it they've they've not struggled really in the games they're not getting blown out just unlucky as kogan has a good chance in the slot but loses a handle on it a couple overtime losses not even just overtime but shootout losses against the top teams they've they've won against this team as o'neill in front is gonna bury and this is not the start that team sonnet wanted no, certainly not, but Kristen O'Neill, again, showing her hockey IQ, going to the net with her stick on the ice, and it's just kind of another broken play. The pucks are bouncing towards the net. Erica Howe's able to get a pad on it, make that first save, but Team Sonnet really needs to be picking up those sticks on the offense coming towards their net. Get a second look at that as the speed, too, is just pushing those D back a little too much. And Kayla Vespa, I mean, a great job. These two are really finding some chemistry on this line. Uh, of course, supported by Laura Stacy, who gets a little swing at the puck in there as well. But uh, the two, uh, you know, I would like to call them guys. But in Kristen O'Neill and Kayla Vespa, just having some incredible offensive chemistry. Well, I can imagine that Kristen O'Neill has a lot of family in the crowd today as Curlette will take a shot blocked in front. So giving her family something to cheer for early. She's got a goal and an assist. And we're only at the 11 minute mark of the first period. And here's Jenner now. She's going to be offside as Rock was tied up in front. You know, we mentioned this about Team Sonic. There's just, there's something's got to give. Something's got to, someone's got to step up and someone's got to score that big goal to get them going. They can get back in these games and we know they can compete with the best. They've taken a game off of Adidas. They've taken Harvey's to a shootout. They've got it. They just got to find it right now. Yeah, I think if you talk to their players, their coaching staff, the culture is there, but at times they're their own worst enemy. I mean, they let in a couple of early goals and all of a sudden the pace of the game changed. They just need to stick to the game plan and, uh, you know, control the puck in that ozone as we were talking about. 
icing call this time against Team Adidas. Bring things back in front of Maddie Rooney. Not much action for her so far. Only one shot on goal for Maddie Rooney. The two number 20s are going to line up. Hannah Brandt, Sarah Nurse. Nurse will get the better of that one as Fast picks up the loose puck. Centering pass to Potomac. Trying to get in behind Thompson. Moves it down low for Nurse. She'll battle along the boards. As Aaron Ambrose back in the lineup after a brief injury kept her out of the Collingwood showcase. But a good addition to the blue line for Team Sonnet. Bouncing puck. Kessel will settle it down. Moves it to Nurse. Quickly over to Potomac. Trying to avoid the offside. We've talked about this. A little moves at the blue line. You want to avoid. That gray zone can get pretty dangerous. And fortunately for Sarah Nurse on that play, there's no chance of the open ice hit. But certainly you see the players straddling the blue line there. You just want to try to get pucks in deep. Nothing too fancy. And, uh, you know, take the puck to the net. They try to enter the zone with Stacy on the near side. The puck bounces off of Bulk and Skate. And now inside the Adidas zone is Schneider battling with Dunn along the boards. Schneider with time. Tries to send it over to Bulkin. She's got Stacy on her quick. Now Schneider trying to toe drag around O'Neill. And O'Neill's going to bat that puck out. Oh, without a little help, a little friendly bump there from Sam Kogan. As the two players just kind of look each other off and uh, maybe some choice words from Kristen O'Neill there. <laughs> she can be feisty despite yeah. being vertically challenged. You know, despite her size, she tends to find herself in these sticky situations. And, uh, you know, that grit is, I'm sure, what keeps her competitive juices flowing. Buckles now inside the sonnet zone. D to D pass with Brown. By Gavrilova on the far side. Prevo chasing the puck. Stop by Dossler. Gavrilova stops her at the hash marks. Now behind the net. Over to Bunton. Her shot wide. Out of Brown. She gets a little bit of contact on the board, but the puck is cleared out by Team Adidas. Willoughby leaves it for DiGiralamo. Long pass intended for Gribbins, and it's going to go the distance. And we're going to head out. It's a tough start for Team Sonnet. They're down by three. We'll be right back with the rest of the first period. You're watching the Secret Dream Gap Tour on your TV. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Worship from home with the Royal House. Watch Hope for Today, Sundays at 10 a.m. on your TV. Truly local. Exclusively on Kochiko. If alcohol builds a wall around you, know this. We are here to help if you want us to. It's never too early or too late to ask for help with a drinking problem. Alcoholics Anonymous. There is a way out. All right, Abby Rock inside the zone. Little miscommunication on the TV timeout down at ice level. So back in play as Jenner sends it in deep towards Rooney. And she's going to cover up. And surely the girls now will go to a TV timeout. But we're going to chat about Alexa Vasco. This is her homecoming from St. Catharines. The first time she's playing a professional female hockey game in St. Catharines. I saw a lot of Number 10, Alexa Vasco signs in the stands. This is an exciting day for her. Yeah, I'm sure she's happy to be home in front of her hometown crowd. Her great uncle, Elmer Moose Vasco, played 13 seasons in the NHL as a defenseman with the Chicago Blackhawks. Of course, as you said, hailing from St. Catharines, she played at Mercyhurst University, and she's got four goals and assists on the season so far, playing a pivotal role for this team sonnet. You're a goaltender, Liz. <laughs> you know Erica Howe very well. What is she thinking right now? You know, Howie is just one of those cool, calm goaltenders. She's never too high, never too low. And if it's not her game, she has the poise and confidence to 
communicate that with her coaches and her goaltender partner. But honestly, on these three goals, there's not a whole lot she can do. She's picking up the first puck, and I think Team Sauna just really needs to identify the threats, identify those sticks, get some stick lifts, especially around that blue paint, and just tighten up the D zone a little bit. I don't think they're out of this game, but they've certainly created a little bit of a hill for themselves to climb. They've got the players to do it. They've got the international leading goal scorer in the history of women's hockey in Hillary Knight. They've got Hannah Brandt lining up against Sarah Nurse. We talked about Abby Rock. There's a ton of girls on this team who can put the puck behind the net. And that's without mentioning one of our best players on the national team, Brianne Jenner. And statistically, I mean, this team, we get our stats from Sport Logic. This team does a lot of things right. They possess the puck a lot in the Ozone. Their power play is somewhat successful. It's just they seem to find a way to dig themselves in these holes. And especially when there's lots of game to play, it's pretty tough to get out of. Sarah Nurse battling along the boards, trying to get around Zandy Hart. The puck loose in the crease. Erica Howe's going to jump on it. Good look at Megan Mickelson. Yeah, Megan Mickelson of St. Albert, Alberta, University of Wisconsin graduate. Of course, a world champion at age 37 after major knee surgery. It's just an incredible athlete, incredible determination that she's got, and a great perspective on the game. I mean, she's you know, had her fair share of broadcasting debuts and just sees the game so well. The difference between good and great, and it's that determination for her to come back from that injury, tried really, really hard to get back for the Olympic Games. And doctors had told her there was no way. She was so close to succeeding that timeline, but was able to compete in the World Championships in August. And a champion at 37. Two kids later, here's Laura Stacy now in the slot. Vespa threatening again, but stopped in the slot. Laura Stacy back inside the zone. She's going to try to send the puck in deep, but it's stopped by Brown at the hash marks. They'll regroup in the neutral zone. Stacy now inside. Couple offside calls so far for Team Adidas, and that's another one. We're going to take a look here at Sarah Nurse. Uh, we've talked about her a little bit this game, but she's just such a great opportunistic player. She finds the space on the ace, looks to go to round Vulcan, kind of draws that D towards the center of the ace, and then, of course, continues the pursuit with her stick on the ace towards the net. And these are some you know, seemingly fundamental things that we talk about at all levels, and yet we do it because they seem to be successful. <laughs> Even the pros do it. Deidre Alamo chasing the puck, leaves it for Dunn. Quick passing and Adidas is out of their zone, but Ambrose picks up the loose puck in the neutral zone. Deidre Alamo now. Now picked up by Thompson. There Thompson in med school. Professional hockey player as a hobby <laughs> on the weekends. We went to breakfast this morning at 6 a.m., Liz, and there were players in there already studying in the breakfast room, waiting for breakfast to be served. So a huge credit to those who are still studying. A lot of these athletes are in graduate programs trying to conclude their studies or still have many years of studying ahead of them, but good dedication at 6 a.m. already in the breakfast room, studying for exams on a professional hockey weekend. And of course, Claire Thompson, a graduate of Princeton University, which you may have heard of. Um, a lot of these players are you know, working full-time jobs, studying full-time, and as you say, finding the time to prepare and train professionally to compete against the best in the world, who luckily for them do it as their full-time job. Adidas is now buzzing in the zone. Sarah Nurse picks up the loose puck. Over to the far side, Mickelson's gonna take a one-timer. That's blocked by Gavrilova. Now along the boards, Curlet. Back to Nurse, she's got time to the slot. Her shot goes wide. Kessel this time. On the goal line, down low to Potomac. She's got Nurse in front. Nurse, her shot goes wide. Mickelson keeps things alive for Adidas. This line is gassed for Team Sonnet. Gavrilova's gonna try and chip it out. And they're gonna go for a change. Not everybody's gonna get off as Renata Fast is in quick. Fast in the slot, her shot. Stopped by Hell. rebound. Potomac 
trying to find it. Still loose. Sandy Hart picks it up behind the goal line. They're not a fast. Back at the blue line. Thought she had her deep partner. She's dropped by Schneider. And she tried to retrieve that pass, and it's going to be cleared out by Team Sonnet as Group is battling now with Stacy. Stacy back on the forecheck. They move the puck over to Buckles on the far side. Now Vasco chasing it down to Kogan. Buckles back to Kogan. Kogan with pressure. Vasco is going to come help out. Now to Brown. Quick one timer. That's stopped by Vespa, the second attempt. Gets by Rooney, but just wide. Now Knight at the hash marks. Boxing out is fast. Pins her to the boards. She pops it out for Kogan. Kogan sends it down for Knight below the goal line. Scott Buckle supporting. Back to Knight on the far side. Hillary Knight on the goal line, her shot. Rooney will cover that up. A little bit of pressure here from Team Sonnet. They'll want to finish the period on a positive note. Yeah, we're going to take a quick look at a great defensive play as we were speaking about in front of the Sonnet net. We need those players to be lifting sticks. You see, after a very long shift, Micah Zandi Hart able to lift the stick of Sarah Potomac, taking away a great A scoring opportunity. She gives her a little extra love after that as well. Thompson with a C9 shot, tipped wide. Ambrose now with space. Ambrose trying to find Brandt. That tip can't make it to the net. Done now with the puck in her skates. Got Brant watching her. She'll send it down to Knight. Knight. The puck in her skates. DiGiralmo does a good job battling her along the wall. And it'll be cleared out of the zone as Ambrose picks it up in the Sonnet zone. Quick pass. Tonight she tips it back in. And Rooney sees who's coming towards her and she's going to cover it up. I would too. <laughs> you got a couple Olympians skating towards you, but great play by. Jesse Geralmo in the corner. Yeah, good look at Jesse Geralmo. She's a head, she's an assistant coach. I'm sorry for the Etobicoke Junior Dolphins. Um, works for the Toronto Argonauts as her full-time, part-time work. Uh, her undergraduate is in communications and rhetor rhetorical studies at Syracuse University, where she was the captain. Holds the record for most points as a D at Syracuse University. Graduated last year. Kind of scary sometimes when you talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to be there? But we're going to send things down at ice level. Jessica, what do you have for us? Coming up in the first intermission, we will be interviewing your first goal scorer, Kayla Vespa, as well. There will be a Crime Stoppers feature with our uh, partner from Crime Stoppers, a scoring summary and highlights from the first period. Thanks, Jessica. So your first goal scorer for Team Adidas. Stick around for that. Kayla Vespa with a beauty to start things off. Abby Rock now. Got 2.45 remaining. Let's see if Sonic can get something going. They send Jenner to the far blue line. Curlet, though, gets there first. Trying to find Nurse in the neutral zone. It hits off of Leslie's skate. Now bouncing around in the Sonic zone. They send Knight back out. I think we're going to see Hillary Knight a little bit more on the ice. Today, as Kristen O'Neill tries to clear it, she gets hit by Rock. Now tipped in front by Rock and Rooney. That's a good glove on that one. See Abby Rock, uh, all too familiar with the front of the net. She's taking an extra shot there from Megan Mickelson, but we'll get a good look at this tip in front. A little bit of a bump from Abby Rock on Kristen O'Neill. And of course, a shot on deflected in front, but at. Rooney, I'm sorry, able to swoop that one up with her glove. It's been a long day. It has been. <laughs> Hannah Brandt on her knees, gets the puck to Thompson. Thompson's going to take a quick shot. Loose in front, Scruple looking for it. Here into the corner. Thompson's going to send it over to Knight. Knight on the far side. She's got a tough battle with Renata Fast defending her. And they get the puck to Vespo, who's going to clear it out to Stacy. Stacy in the middle. There's Jocelyn the Rock on a break with Laura Stacy. Big stop by Erica Howe. 
Oh, and the Markham Thunder player in me is just so happy right now. Of course, the Markham Thunder back in 2018, Jocelyn LaRock, Laura Stacy, Erica Howe, they were all part of that team. Jocelyn LaRock and Laura Stacy had just come back with the silver medal from the Olympics. And of course, Erica Howe was our starter, starting goalie in that test. So to see the three of them put on a little bit of a show here, you know, just takes me right back. And a huge testament to these three players for you know, playing in the PWHBA, trying to better the game and continuing to do so at an elite level. It's got to feel good for Erica Howell. Big stop on Laura Stacey in the 2 on 0 A minute 30 remaining in the first period. Hannah Brandt now trying to skate it out. She'll run into some troubles and Hillary Knight's going to help her. Hits off of a glove on the bench. Sarah Nerfs has a little bit of a laugh. Didn't realize it was her glove. <laughs> She's going to jump on the ice now. Uh, we spoke to Sarah Nurse earlier, you know, she's one of these players that just likes to enjoy the game when she's in it. And when she's on the bench, you know, she keeps it light, she's dancing, she's having fun and, you know, throwing out some chirps at the girls. And you just see there with her laissez-faire, cut a hand out the window and we'll get a stoppage of play for that. Kessel sends the puck in front, trying to connect with Ponomac. Cleared into the corner. Dunn's going to keep things alive at the blue line. Good battle by Vasco. Kogan gets the puck, but we've got a whistle, and it's going to be a penalty. And it's coming to Team Sonnet. The crowd is so loud, they didn't even hear the whistle. And it's going to be body contact. Yeah, it's, it's a tough penalty to take right now. I mean, the puck is moving up along the wall. We'll see here. And Alex Vasco is just kind of headed south as Sam Kogan is headed north. And unfortunately, Tibadina's player kind of in that mix. Vasco will sit for two or less with just under a minute to go in this first period. Vasco gets the puck at the blue line. First power play of the game. Now Nurse looking for fast back door, but Jenner, good stick. She tips that one wide. Down low to Thompson. She's got two Adidas players on her pot about comes away with it. Back to the point for Fast. LaRock now. Mishandles that, we'll send it back to Fast. Fast looking back door. Gessel was there, but a good stick by Aaron Ambrose. LaRock, 20 seconds down low. Now to Nurse. Fast in front. It's bouncing around, and Howe able to track that and cover it up. Sarah Potomac just trying to get a handle on that bouncing puck off Renata Fast, who's playing that flank position, looking for a nice hard shot from her. And just couldn't quite get the get the grip on this one. As you see, uh, you see Potomac kind of laughing that one off. You see Matt Leitner going to his first power play unit here, just trying to get something going for the girls and. Of course, that first line has just been so strong for Team Adidas. They're relying on them on the special teams as well. Hillary Knight's going to clear the puck out for Team Sonnet. And that's going to about do it. O'Neill might get one last shot on how, and she does. 20 minutes in the books in St. Catharines. The crowd loves it. And it's Team Sonnet once again finding themselves in a hole. They're down 3 0. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with your first period intermission. of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit stoptracktragedies.ca. When an impaired driver killed my brother DJ, some people used the A word. They called it an accident, but it wasn't. An accident implies that no one was at fault. But when someone impaired by alcohol and or drugs chooses to drive, they're fully responsible for the crash that can result. So please, for the memory of my brother DJ and the thousands of families whose lives have been shattered by impaired drivers, let's drop the A word. A crash caused by impaired driving is not an accident. Online betting is booming. Booyah! Woo! You could win big! 
but you could also lose. And that's a reality nobody's shouting about. Learn about safer play at knowtherisks.ca. In a society that we were brought up in, it's very hard on little black boys. Sometimes when I cry, I won't know how I'm feeling or why I'm crying. You have to navigate feelings and emotions so the world don't get you. Do it like this. Catch the PWPHPA Dream Tour in action Friday, February 10th from Peterborough and Niagara right here on your TV. I'm Jessica Ostron here with Kayla Vespa from Team Adidas with a goal and an assist so far in the game after just 20 minutes. Kayla, tell me about uh, your team's play in the first period. Yeah, I think we did a lot of things right. Um, getting good sticks in lanes, um, going hard to the net, and getting lots of shots. So we just wanted to keep things simple um, today and uh, use our speed to advantage. So I think that's uh, going well in the first period there and uh, looking forward to the second. I mean, you're already up 3-0, of course, but is there anything that you feel that your team can improve on for the rest of the game? Yeah, I think just getting in lanes in the D zone, um, not getting too lazy out there, um, back in our D zone, just uh, getting sticks in lanes, like I said, um, and uh, taking the body as well. So just keeping things simple, that's about it. What was a message from Coach Leitner heading into a game like this today? Yeah, I think, uh, I, I mean, we knew a lot of people were coming, so just uh, going out there, having fun, um, doing what we do, using our speed, um, Starting off right at the bat, um, getting shots on net, and uh, yeah, just keeping things exciting out here. So, Kayla, you are from Hamilton, which is not too far from St. Catharines here. What does it feel like to play on a rink like this so close to home? Yeah, it's definitely a surreal feeling. Um, I got a lot of people in my corner here, family, friends, co-workers, um, girls that I coach this year. So uh, it's been a lot of fun, and I appreciate all their support and all the fans. Um, the atmosphere is awesome. So um, the Niagara Ice Dogs has uh, put on a good event. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Kayla. Good luck the rest of the game. Thanks so much. Bye. That was Kayla Vespa from Team Adidas. She's got a goal and an assist so far in the game. We'll be right back after this short break with a feature from our sponsorship partner, Prime Stoppers. Matt Sisko. On the very first episode of Talk STC, we speak with the CEO of the First Ontario Performing Arts Centre, Colleen Smith. In addition, we're also going to chat with Rachel Brathwaite from the St. Catharines Downtown Association. Talk STC on your TV. I felt really alone when John died and the United Way program really, I reached out to them and they just really helped me feel less alone and help me feel validated in my grief, which has been tremendously helpful during a time when I've never felt so alone in my life. When an impaired driver killed my brother DJ, my life changed forever. During the pandemic, all of our lives changed and many of us turned to alcohol and drugs to cope. As life returns to normal, the increase in substance use from COVID has lingered and some police services report an increase in impaired driving that caused heartbreak and devastation. Now, more than ever, we need your commitment to never drive impaired and to encourage all of your family and friends to do the same. Together, we can save lives. The three big challenges I had was my wife dying, my father dying from COVID-19, financial instability and security was, the whole year was very stressful. And then I heard that the United Way was sponsoring a course in mindfulness, and that certainly happened. My life is moving forward. I'm enjoying life again, and I'm thankful that I was able to take that program. Thank you. Family Day is coming up, and we want to send your family on an unforgettable trip to Niagara Falls. Enter now for your chance to win a two-night stay at Great Wolf Lodge. To find out more and to enter, visit your TV on Facebook. Clean up between now and the playoffs, obviously, but scored their way out of trouble. Scores! Dagger for the Spitfires! 
through 337. The captain back to the middle. Maggio fakes the pass and then slips it in on goal and he scores! by Crime Stoppers of Niagara. Crime Stoppers is also a major partner with the OJHL, or sorry, OHL rather, Niagara Ice Dogs, and board chair Ernie Sibbett spoke to us earlier about the successes of the Niagara program and its beneficial affiliation with the Ice Dogs. Oh, well, Crime Stoppers, great. Uh, when we started out, we, we were just uh, doing, uh, taking tips on crimes, or you know, if you see it, tell it type thing. We actually get four tips every day of the week on drugs, every day. We get thousands of tips on all different things during the year. We uh, take in so much money and uh, goods and stuff that goes to the, the province for uh, illegal gains or whatever it's called. Or, but what happened was we were approached six years ago uh, about getting involved with elder abuse. And a gentleman approached us and said, we need Crime Stoppers in the elder abuse. And I, at the delivery. time, I said, why? He said, I'm a financial advisor. Uh, a couple came to me, a woman was 67, he was 70. They wanted to combine their incomes. He was an American making 30,000 a year. She had millions. So when they uh, did the papers, like she seemed rational, they both seemed rational, so he did the paperwork. And then what happened was, uh, as soon as he did the paperwork, the guy said to him, I want 250000 out of that account now. And he said, why? She's got 650000 cash in a bank account. He says, because I want my own financial advisor, and I asked for it. I want it now. He shredded the papers. Just took them in the shredder and said, I'm not doing that for you. His hands were tied. He couldn't tell anybody. So it allowed him to go someplace else and try and do the same thing. So long story short, it, Crime Stoppers are anonymous. And he knew that they should have been turned in. He could have phoned Crime Stoppers, give the tip, and never felt uh, bad about it or at all. So that started us in the elder abuse program. And now we're in a beware, take care on top of that where we uh, give seminars and we hand out books on scam alerts, what to do, what not to do, uh, if this happens, do this, and it's going good. So basically, that's what, in a nutshell, what we do. Tell me how you got involved with uh, the event this weekend. Oh, it, we had come to the office to do something else. We were meeting with Raven and uh, Katie Van Anrap, who's a season's ticket holder, but is on our board. Uh, she came with me, we went in to talk about uh, things we wanted to do in the future. And uh, when we come in, she asked, did you hear the event that's coming? And she talked to us and uh, she was, uh, she's a pretty smart young lady. And she said, we're doing this program. She explained how it started. Like she had saw it last year. And then this year when it came up, she applied, but this year it went through the OHL. So they had to go through the OHL to get it but they, they stayed with it and they worked and they got one of the two games. So she got that, she said, oh, we're looking for sponsors and that. And I said, what's the sponsor? We already are partners with uh, Ice Dogs. We do all kinds of advertisements in the arena and things like that. So I said, well, we might be interested. And she said, Can, will you guys take it on? And we said, yes, we will. Now the Crime Stoppers and the Ice Dogs are very close. Expand on the relationship. When uh, they moved here, I went to them when I first got with Crime Stoppers to see if we could do a partnership with them and also with uh, Avondale stores. So what's happened is, as you, you can see, if you look in the arena, you see Crime Stoppers, Avondale, we're together and all this stuff. So what happens is we sponsor everything here. We're on the the lights for the exits and, and that kind of stuff. We run commercials during the game. So what happens is we uh, pay, like everybody else, to have it done, but we have so much stuff given to us that uh, what we pay is like a tenth of what we get. And 
we're very happy. They've done nothing but treating us good. The Burks treated us great, and the Dobblers, the Dobblers are doing the very same thing. You looking forward to the game? Oh, we'll be here. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the game. I think it's going to be exciting. There's so many girls hockey players coming to that game, it's going to be amazing. Actually, Tim Salisbury, we each got uh, 20 tickets to go with our sponsors. He's bringing a girls hockey team to come to the game. If Darren and Michelle ever could bring a team here, I think the community would be so pleased but I'm not trying to put pressure on them. They're still trying to turn the hockey team around, you know. But uh, when I saw the last game, it was a sellout, and all the people, I said, good for us. It's coming back to where it was. We thank Ernie Civit very much for that little tidbit. And now we're going to go to a quick break. The score is 3 nothing in favor of Team Adidas, and we'll be back with your scoring summary and highlights on your TV Niagara. Worship from home, Sunday mornings. Your TV, truly local, exclusively on Kojiko. I am 31 years old. I am on the double lung transplant list. I hear it all the time. You don't look sick. It's one thing to deal with the physical symptoms of pH, but because I don't look sick, I also have to deal with that. Pulmonary hypertension is a rare, life-threatening lung disease. There is no cure, but treatments are available. Talk to your doctor about pH if you're experiencing these unexplained symptoms. It could save your life. Man's lonely. Going through life's lonely. There is the therapeutic aspect of music. with a drinking problem. Alcoholics Anonymous, there is a way out. For more information, visit aa.org and download the Meeting Guide app. I will stand by you. I will help you through. When you Being there, pass it on. You can, do, you can go. Yes, Alcoholics Anonymous. For more information, visit aa.org. Welcome back, hockey fans, to Meridian Center in St. Catharines. Back with your first period scoring summary. First goal scored by Vespa. That's Kayla Vespa. And that is from O'Neill and Stacy. The second goal scored by Amanda Kessel, uh, Amanda Kessel by Potomac and Kia Nurse. And the third goal by O'Neill, assisted by Vespa again. That's a goal and an assist for her in the first. And Stacy got an assist on that one as well. That's two assists for her. And we'll throw it back up to the ladies for the second period. Thanks, Jessica. And we have a lot to talk about. We're going to go into the highlights. Three goals for Team Adidas. We know that Team Sonic can play. We know that they can compete with the best. They just don't have the chemistry right now, especially in this first period. Yeah, the thing really separating Team Adidas from Team Sonic right now is that Adidas speed up front. And that line of Laura Stacy, Kayla Vespa, and Kristen O'Neill has put up an incredible number of points here. We're going to get to those highlights in a second. But Team Sonnet really has to match that speed or limit their chances on the rush. Whether that means playing smarter defensively or on their transition game, they just really have to tighten up and limit those chances that they're getting on Team Sonnet's net. Well, we talked to Kayla Vespo. Let's take a look at her highlight reel goal. Started things off for Team Adidas early in the first period. Yeah, some great speed from Kayla Vespa, and that's what she's known for. Not the tallest structure on the ice, but Kristen O'Neill does a great job chasing this play down. She goes to the, Kayla Vespa goes to the front of the net, and a great pass from O'Neill in the corner. As we see here, just that quick burst of speed that Kayla Vespa has coming over the blue line, and she goes relatively untouched until she gets that pass from Kristen O'Neill. I still think 
Team Sonnet thought there might have been an icing coming. It, it just it not characteristic of Zandy Hart to give up on a play like that, and I think they might have thought they had the icing there. But nonetheless, two more goals come their way. Amanda Kessel gets one. It, it just seems to slow them down. What does Sonnet have to do in this period to bounce back? Well, it's just the importance of keeping that focus. And as you say, maybe they're questioning an icing or not. Regardless, you have to play out these situations. I mean, you know you're in a chase icing situation. You can't see everybody around you. You gotta play that, that puck out and you know, really try to fight for that possession in your own zone. We talked about Amanda Kessel. She came back in Collingwood. She had a goal in Collingwood, and she gets another one tonight. Yeah, Amanda Kessel doing a, a fantastic job, as I said earlier, stepping up into the role that Kendall Coyne Schofield is normally in. She finds her quiet pocket of the ace. Again, would love to see, you know, some sticks on stick, just, a, you know, even on the hip, wherever you can to try to interfere with the offensive team Adidas, but she goes there quietly and wide open net for her to bury that puck in. Well, Kristen O'Neill, we talked about her a lot, a ton of speed. You always notice her presence on the ice. She gets the third goal for team Adidas. Yeah, Kristen O'Neill doing what she does best. She's showing off her, her fast feet and she comes on here. She's going to get the puck kind of again on a broken play out of the corner, but she does a great job corralling it. It's bouncing around her feet. She's able to just settle that puck down and wrap it around a sprawling Erica Howe to get her point on the night. Well, we know that Team Sonnet's got to do something. They're, in my opinion, I think they got to ride some of their Olympians. They got to ride those two lines, get them going. We got to get a Hillary Knight goal. We got to get something with Hannah Brandt, Abby Rock. What's the message for Moore McIntosh to start this second period? I mean, I think we're all thinking it, but simplify, simplify, simplify. This is a team that is going to get outskated by Adidas. It's a marathon. We got 60 minutes of hockey, and Team Sonnet has not particularly made a name for themselves for being a fast game. So play your game, limit the chances in-house, and be opportunistic when you do have those chances on Team Adidas goaltender. We'll see if the in between period speech works for Laura McIntosh. Her team is down by three. We thank you for joining us. My name is Izzy Germain, joined by Liz Knox. You're watching the PWHPA Secret Dream Gap Tour, the OHL Showcase. We're so happy to be in St. Catharines tonight. Had an earlier game in Peterborough this morning. You're probably wondering how we got here so fast. <laughs> we did have a, an excellent driver in Alexis Miller, one of our staff members with the PWHPA. But a, a good game there, a 5-2 victory for Team Harvey's over Team Scotiabank. And it allowed Team Adidas to hold on to their second place in the standings. Now Kessel with the puck inside the zone, taken away by Zandy Hart. Can't catch up to the puck as Jinsey Dunn is going to send it down. Sister Joy Dunn just won a bronze medal with Team USA's U18 program. A lot of talent in the Dunn family. Yeah, and lots of young talent. I mean, Jinsey Dunn is still at the very beginning of her national team career. Of course, breaking uh, the roster. We we'll see her upcoming in the rivalry series for Team USA. And as you mentioned, her younger sister Joy making a name for herself as well. So lots to be seen from the Dunn girls. A captain nonetheless, too, with that team. A surprise for them to be in the bronze medal game, but came away with the bronze medal. There's Sarah Nurse now on her knees and right back up. She takes a hit from Vasco. She'll send the puck towards the net. Sandy Hart, though, stops it and moves it quickly to Jenner. Jenner to Rock. She's got Vasco on the far side with her. Dunn puts her into the boards, but Rock is going to hang on to it. Jenner's quick shot blocked in front by Vespa. Vespa from Hamilton, Ontario, not far from here. Home of Sarah Nurse as well. Seeing a lot of Sarah Nurse signs in the crowd. As Buckles picks up the loose puck below the goal line, she'll get help by Emily Brown, who rims it around to Jenner, and she's going to tip it out of the zone. And they're going to avoid the icing call <laughs> just barely. Everybody was kind of watching that puck as Deidre Alamo picks it up for Adita. She's got pressure from Skarupa. Moves it over to Dunn. Quickly to Vespa at the hash marks. Thompson's going to jump up, intercept the pass for Willoughby. Deidre Alamo and Dunn will have to regroup in their own zone, maybe for a second time now as Dunn has it. Dunn is going to hang on to it, tries the toe drag around Skrupa. 
She's going to take that puck. Willoughby, good back check. She steals it back for Team Adidas. Willoughby uses the boards, gets away from the forecheck of Hillary Knight, moves it forward to O'Neill. O'Neill, now to Gribbins. Gribbins can't get the shot off. Good stick by Ambrose. Knight now at the side of the net. Forward to Thompson. Thompson's going to be chopped down. That's most definitely going to be a tripping penalty, and it's going to be against Kristen O'Neill. And this is just the kind of swing of momentum that Team Sauna is hoping for. They're going to have the person advantage. You see the puck just comes through the middle of the ice. Claire Thompson does a great job kind of dipsy-doing around that center ice line. Kelly Grimms just gets the stick out. She steps on it, and she'll sit for two or less. It's actually Grimms who's got the call. I don't know where Gribbins really played a piece in that. She was back checking. They called her for slashing. I definitely thought it was Kristen O'Neill getting sent to the box for tripping. Nonetheless, we've got a power play for Team Sonic. Brant now. Down low to Knight. Knight's going to take her time, sends it to the blue line for Ambrose. Aaron Ambrose looking back door to Rock. It's in her skates. Still loose. Rock picks it up. Sends it to Knight. To Jenner. Brianne Jenner and Ambrose exchange passes. Once again, Ambrose now winds up looking for the tip. Brant couldn't get a stick on it. It seems Sonis just trying to generate a little bit of chemistry here, you know, working the puck on the outside. Of course, between Aaron Ambrose, Brianne Jenner, and Hillary Knight, three very strong offensive players. And unfortunately for Ambrose, just unable to get a handle on that little knuckle puck, but. They'll continue to work this power play for a minute 20. They clear the puck out. Brandt gets it at the red line. Moves it to Knight. Knight's going to pick up speed in the neutral zone. Sends it into the corner. To Jenner. Jenner quick in front and almost squeaks by Rooney. As it hits the rock on its way through the crease. Stacy trying to clear it out. Hits the boards. Rock stops it at the blue line. But it's returned. To Stacy LaRock now. And Stacy. Nice play by Ambrose as she makes a diving play to stop that pass to Stacy. Now Knight with room trying to get around Dunn. She had Jenner with her but couldn't handle the puck as it was a little too far ahead. It cleared out 30 seconds remaining as Zandy Hart has the puck in the neutral zone. Zandy Hart. And they're going to call that offside. A little bit of a delayed whistle. And we're going to take a look at that great jump from Hillary Knight. And we talked about this in between periods. They need to find that extra gear. It starts with Hillary Knight getting pucks in behind Team Adidas D. She's able to beat her player to the puck, get it in front for a chance on net. And then, of course, back at the other end, we talked about taking care of our own zone. Aaron Ambrose with a great sliding play to take away that cross ice pass on the two on one. What an incredible ambassador for the women's game and for hockey in general. And incredible for some of these athletes to really be learning from Hillary Knight and to witness the greatness, one of the greatest female hockey players to ever play the game and will most likely go down in history as the best American for sure to have played the women's game. Here's Sarah Nurse now inside the zone. Penalty has expired. We're back to five on five action as Zandi Hart and Sarah Nurse, did they think there was a whistle? They were having a little bit of a moment there, <laughs> laughing about that play. Kessel trying to keep things alive. Now Leslie decides not to shoot, hangs on to it, runs into Dunn, moves it forward to Vespa. Vespa over the blue line. No one there to take that pass. Nurse with a good back check, able to retrieve the puck back to Kessel in the neutral zone. Kessel now finds Nurse. Nurse protecting the puck, sends it forward, and she gets hit into the boards as Erica Howe covers up. And the shot's starting to even out, so a much better start to the second period for Team Sonnet, 11-8 now. We see a great chance here from Sarah Nurse just trying to pull it through Zandy Hart's leg, and she does a great job taking that angle away. So we kind of see Zandy Hart and Sarah Nurse there getting their helmets a little across. <laughs> That's what it was. They weren't, yeah, they, I thought that, well, they were laughing, but I was wondering why they were still in the corner not playing the puck, but they were stuck their masks together. 
As Sonnet tries to clear it out, Knight gets a stick on it, chips it down low. O'Neill gets there first though, sends it back into the neutral zone. And now offside is Laura Stacy as she runs into Hannah Brandt and can't stop. We're gonna take a look at this play. You just catch it at the end. She's going to the net and look right here as their masks get stuck. And that's <laughs> why they stopped playing. Oh my goodness. Just love little moments like that. And you know, as we talked about, this is the first year we've had PWHPA teams that are mixed rosters of girls who don't necessarily train in the same region. So a lot of these players have played with and against, you know, the other 96, 97 players of the PWHPA have great relationships with them. And, you know, sometimes those funny moments just bring you back down to part of the reason why he loved the game. Good chance in front for Team Adidas, but it's cleared out by Bulkin. Stopped at the blue line, though. Gribben's there with a chance. Stopped by Zandy Hart. Now back to the point for Laroc. Looking for Dunn. Dunn's going to send it low to Gribbins. She's put into the boards by Bulkin. Digging for his double IHF rules. We won't get a whistle on any of those board plays. Girls have to move the puck. Now Kessel with time. Looking back door for Dunn. Dunn at the hash marks. Going back to Kessel on the near side. Amanda Kessel to DiGirolamo at the point. They'll exchange passes as Kessel's gonna walk in. Zanny Hart with a good stick. Now Donovan to Kessel. Deidre Almo's open at the point. She wants it, but she's gonna send it in front of the net. Bouncing puck. Cleared out by Schneider. Now Schneider. The sign of the net. Has pressure from Ponomac. And Kessel. He does find Bulkin at the hash marks. Moves it forward to Kogan. But she's offside. We're going to take a look at this defensive play by Micah Zandy Hart. She's had a couple plays like this where she's just doing a great job getting in the lane. You see her come out to challenge the shot from Amanda Kessel. And then again here, she's able just to get a little stick on it as the play continues. Amanda Kessel with a good look on that. As we said, she's added to that offensive uh, you know, force of the Team Adidas. But some great defensive play from Team Sonnet as they've now, I feel, settled into this game a little more than perhaps we saw in the first period. Much better start to this second period than what we saw at the beginning of the game for Team Sun. I want to mention, too, Amanda Kessel uh, working with the Pittsburgh Penguins, one of many of our athletes working with NHL programs, and just good to see female involvement in the men's game as well. Yeah, the Pittsburgh Penguins have certainly kept her busy in the first half of our Secret Dream Gap Tour, which kind of kept her away from the game for a little bit, but happy to see her back here in the second half. Of course, she's sister-in-law of Courtney Burchard Kessel, who coached the U18 Team Canada to gold most recently, and as we all know, sibling of Phil Kessel. Espa now with the puck at the hash marks, looking to connect with Stacy. They'll need help from Mickelson to enter the zone. Now Vespa, quick shot, and Howe's gonna cover that up. A lot of the girls are working with NHL programs. Uh, I'll try to remember them all. I won't forget the one I forgot last time. Marie-Philippe Poulet with the Montreal Canadiens, Rebecca Johnston with the Calgary Flames, Kendall Coyne Schofield with Chicago, as well as Bridget Lequette. Hmm, there's gotta be more. Oh, Haley Skimura is with the Washington Capitals. Washington Capitals. There's too many of them, really, to keep going. Now, obviously, there's female involvement with the Toronto Maple Leafs as well. But it just, you're really starting to see this with the player development. And I think the men's game is really starting to notice that they have so much to give to those in development with the NHL. And to be able to learn from Marie-Philippe Poulain and Kendall Coyne Schofield at that level is an incredible opportunity for these young athletes trying to crack NHL rosters. And I just think there's so much value to the way that these women see the game and the perspective that they have to offer. Uh, we saw earlier today, Laura Fortino putting her team on the board. And of course, she's affiliated with the OHL Hamilton Bulldogs. So again, just great opportunities for the players, but more so for these organizations to benefit from, you know, the education, the years of hard work that these athletes have put into this game. Good defensive play there by Hillary Knight. No penalty coming as Grupa was trying to chase down a loose puck in front of Rooney. And 
Sonnebench not happy with that. They just seem to not really catch a break right now, but they're playing a lot better. 10.45 remaining in the second period. We're now 12-8 in the shots. Here's a good look at this Lorac play. And Skaruba does a great job getting body position on Jocelyn the Rock. It does seem like, you know, Joss got a little tangled up there, but I guess she towed the line close enough that it was no call from our officials. Gavrilova now along the boards, hit by the Rock. And it's cleared out by Team Adidas. Now Nurse chasing down the puck with speed. Her shot tipped into the corner. Potomac at the hash marks to Willoughby at the point. Finds Dunn. Dunn's going to take a quick shot. Looking for Donovan maybe to get the tip in front, but how an easy save for her. And a great adjustment there, too. We saw in the first period some pucks bouncing around. I'm sure Erica Howe would have liked to settle. She's done a much better job this first half of the second period to corral those pucks, make it easy for the defense, and they're able to get a line change here. But their first line out, as we said earlier, we're looking for a little bit more jump from this Team Sonnet offense. Adidas wins the draw. Willoughby gets a quick shot off the draw. Stopped by Howe. Cleared out quickly by the Sonnet Slappers. Uh, <laughs> they've named themselves. And they're looking for a couple slappers in this one. DiGirolamo. D to D with Dunn. Try to get it through. Leslie gets a stick on it. They find Gribbins at the red line. But battling is Thompson. She gets the puck down in behind Rooney. Rooney will play it to Dunn. Looking to move it forward to Donovan, but Leslie with good pressure as they battle towards the puck. Now DiGirolamo trying to find it in her skates as Rock has her pinned to the boards. Leslie finds the loose puck to Jenner. That one almost tricks Rooney. Willoughby now moves it forward. That'll be an icing call against Team Adidas. And we'll bring things back in front of Maddie Rooney. We're going to take a look at that opportunity from Brianne Jenner. A good battle in the corner from her line mates and Rebecca Leslie who was stuck out there and Abby Rock. They're able to dig that puck out and get it to the offense and Brianne Jenner with a good shot on net. To no avail on Maddie Rooney. Good opportunity for this second line. Team Sonnet maybe to get a tired group of Adidas players as Deidre Alamo skates the puck out and gives her forwards some time to change. Thompson now inside the zone puts the brakes on can't find a pass in front moves it down intended for hillary knight but it finds hannah brand on the far side loose puck in front and knight was there but maddie rooney gets a glove on it they're doing a better job liz a promising start to the second period for team sonnet we're going to take a quick break you're watching the pwhpa secret dream gap tour it's the ohl showcase we'll be right back November 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks. And it shattered her world. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Worship from home with the Royal House. Watch Hope for Today, Sundays at 10 a.m. on your TV. Truly local. Exclusively on Kochiko. All right, welcome back inside the Meriden Center in St. Catharines. Get a quick look at Hillary Knight's chance in front of Maddie Rooney, and you can hear the crowd. The atmosphere so far amazing here in St. Catharines. Yeah, that sonnet offense is starting to click, and it just seems like they're missing that last 1%. We saw some great puck movement through the neutral zone. We saw Hannah Brandt there jumping, leaving her feet to try to keep that puck in, get it towards the net to Hillary Knight. It seems like things are starting to, the tides are starting to turn for Team Sonnet, but they have to keep the pressure. The next goal has to be theirs. This is a team that traditionally gets down two or three goals. It's really hard for them to dig themselves out of it, so... For those at home wondering what the screaming is about, they've got almost 12, I believe, minor hockey teams in here, and they're naming every single one of them, and that is the cheers of those in attendance from those at minor hockey associations. So welcome to all of those watching at home, but also to all of these minor hockey teams who made the trip out to the Meriden Center tonight. Hillary Knight, she stepped things up for Team Sonnet. He's forechecking her, but they're offside. 
as Curlet's gonna skate it out for Team Adidas. Backhands it in. And Mickelson is on the chase. As Sonnet will try to clear it out quickly. Brown finds Knight at the blue line. Knight's gonna take her time. In the neutral zone, finds Brant. They get a stick on it and avoid the icing call as Rooney will leave it for Mickelson. Megan Mickelson to Sarah Nurse. Nurse is gonna turn the Jets on. One on one, Nurse in front, loose puck in the crease and Howe makes another big save. Potomac now trying to find the puck in her skates. Vasco's gonna pick it up in the neutral zone and clears it in deep for Zandy Hart. Tries to send it over to the far side, but Nurse will clear it out. Potomac chasing it. Schneider gets there first. No battle along the boards. LaRock sends it to Fast. Tries to connect with Kessel at the blue line. Kessel now below the goal line, chasing Bulkin. Bulkin finds Vasco as she tips it in deep. Sonnet will go off for a change. We're not a Fast. Long pass to Dostler. Now to Donovan. Donovan with space. An easy save for Howe. Now another equipment <laughs> malfunction there as Leslie's stick is stuck in Dossler's skate. So Adidas will be offside. That'll give Ambrose some time to skate that puck out as she connects with Jenner on the far side. Brianne Jenner below the goal line. Deidre Alamo all over the puck below the goal line today is going to clear that out for Team Adidas. Thompson right back at it for Team Sonnet as she sends it in from the red line. Rooney gets a stick on it. Here's a chance for Leslie and a quick glove save by Maddie Rooney. And that's the right idea from Team Sonnet. We're seeing them more frequently getting pucks behind the net and forcing Team Adidas to break out. We're going to get a good look at the other end here of that Sarah Nurse rush. Again against Sandy Hart, threading the needle between her leg. This time she's able to get a shot off. And Erica Howe does a great job tracking that puck. The D clears it for Team Sonnet. Quick chance there for Sonnet as Manny Rooney jumps out. Well, we know that Sarah Nurse has hands. We saw it. At, we saw it on full display at the NHL All-Star Skills Competition. The only goal, I believe, in that breakout challenge. And at this point in the game, you're really looking at that team sauna bench, just asking yourself who? Who is going to be the one to take this team on their shoulders? Because they need somebody to step up big right now. A couple great shifts here from Abby Rock and Brianne Jenner. And of course, Hillary Knight has been leading the offense. But we need one of these sonnet forwards or defense to find the back of the net. Abby Rock trying to enter the zone, runs into the referee. It's going to be taken down, and now Laura Stacy picks up the loose puck. One-on-one -on -one with Emily Brown. She'll put the brakes on. Megan Mickelson once again jumping up in the play, trying to help out on offense. Can't connect. Jenner back the other way. Brian Jenner with a quick shot. Blocker saved by Rooney. Jenner picks up the loose puck along the boards to Zandy Hart now. Looking back door for Hannah Brandt. Her shot goes high. They're getting close. Sandy Hart, her shot, looking for a tip in front. Maddie Rooney sees that the entire way. Curlette to Nurse. Nurse is just looking to clear it out. She finds Vespa. She settles it down. Vespa one on three. Takes a quick shot. Kessel off the bench. To Deidre Alamo, who's stepping up. In her skates, can't get around Hillary Knight. Down low for Nurse. Nurse along the boards, trying to settle down a bouncing puck. Moves it to Kessel. Looking back door, that's batted out of the air by Knight. Deidre Alamo. Buzzing in the last couple shifts. There's Kessel in front. And it's stopped once again by Howe. Knight. There's it in deep. That'll be an icing call. And it just makes it down as Grupa was close. And we'll bring things back in front of Erica Howe, who's been solid since that third goal. Yeah, showing incredible poise. And when your team's down 3-0 early in the game, 
sometimes it's hard to mentally stay there, but as you see, you mentioned earlier, Erica Howe just so poised, so calm in net. She's able to get a toe on that great opportunity and keep her team in this game. Sonnet wins the draw, but Sandy Hart, lots of pressure from Gribbins and Willoughby. The quick shot to Dossler, stopped by Howe. Now down low, Willoughby to the point for Deidre Alamo. To Dunn. Dunn's going to look for the shot and looking for a tip in front was Gribbins. Stays wide and now Bulkin gets taken down on the far side. They move the puck to Dossler. Cycles down low. No Adidas players on that side as Andy Hart will have time to think about what she wants to do. She'll go back down to Bulkin. Four minutes remaining in the second period. Much tighter matchup than the one that we were expecting so far in this second period. As Sonnet sends it down deep. And we're seeing a lot more of those top two lines trying to get things going. And great little coaching adjustments there. And it's difficult in these Secret Dream Draft Tour. I mean, you want to give players the opportunity to hit the ice, but at the same time, every game matters, every point matters. We are building to a championship weekend in California. Just announced last week. Well, this week's still Friday. I know that the players are quite excited. We've been sitting on this announcement for some time now in association with the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. I guess they're just the Ducks now. I just dated myself by calling them the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the LA Kings <laughs> coach all the Thunderbirds. So it's going to be an exciting weekend there to wrap up this Secret Dream Gap Tour 2023-2024. Probably have the Mighty Ducks. Not 2020. We're not there yet. <laughs> we'll get there, though. Goodness gracious. You probably have the Mighty Ducks on your mind because this morning in Peterborough, they were playing the Mighty Ducks before the girls went out for warm-up. This is true. This is true. It was uh, quite the inspirational moment. A great flick. And as I said, I'm sure I'm dating myself that I can recite most <laughs> of those three movies by heart. Kristen O'Neill now takes her time. Long pass. Trying to connect once again with Vespa. Each a goal and an assist so far in this game. Nice little kick pass by Abby Rock. She's got pressure by LaRock in the corner. Digging for it is Brianne Jenner. And Kristen O'Neill. Still moving it. Of course, we mentioned this earlier, but this is a double IHF rule. And if you're just tuning in, something you may not be used to seeing. Often, we, you know, in the NHL, we hear the whistle along the boards, and the double IHF rule is to keep that puck moving. Still with it below the goal line, though, is Leslie and Team Sonnet. They'll set it to the point for Buckles to Brown. Quick pass back to Leslie. Her one-timer is high. LaRock taking a beating along the boards this shift. As Vespa picks up the loose puck, moves it to O'Neill. Sends it forward for LaRock. LaRock, another offensive D. Here's a chance for Laura Stacy at the side of the net. Couldn't settle it down. And Rock now battling Donovan in the neutral zone. Jenner's going to help out. Jenner trying to dodge her own players to get inside the Adidas zone. And it's stripped by Gribbins. Now Brandt. Fresh legs on the ice for Sonnet. Trying to move it forward to Vasco. Can't connect as Curlette now with time. Vasco chasing her. Looking for a centering pass to Donovan. It finds its way to Bulkin on the far side. Willoughby putting pressure. And Gribbins are, is going to help out. Last minute of play in the second period. Knight finds Vasco. Gets a stick on it. No icing on the play. Send it back tonight. She wound up for the one-timer, just fanned on it. Thompson now moves it forward quickly. 40 seconds remaining. Mickelson, good look over her shoulder. She's going to hang on to it and try to kill some time here. Knight's going to find the loose puck. Tries to avoid the hit. It's taken down by Curlette. Mickelson trying to poke it behind Ambrose. Ambrose standing tall. Kessel will come help out. Now Thompson to the blue line for Ambrose. 
Maybe one last chance for Team Sonnet. Rock still trying to kick the puck. <laughs> and a nice play by Thompson as she moves up, gets the pass from Knight. Can't connect on the shot. Kogan below the goal line. Looks for the centering pass. We'll get a whistle with two seconds remaining. And we're going to go see what Jessica has in store for us for the intermission. Coming up in the second intermission, we'll be interviewing Team Sonnet's Abby Rock, as well as we've got a Margot Page feature, and she is the head coach of the Brock University women's team, as well as your scoring summary and second period highlights. All right, thanks, Jessica. Abby Rock, she's getting all the media attention this week. Guests on the Noxie and Cack show this week, and Team Sonnet has pulled Erica Howe. They've got two seconds on the clock, but they don't win the draw. And that'll do it for the third period. A much better period, but they have nothing to show for it. And we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, Abby Rock will be with Jessica. It's three nothing, Team Adidas leads Team Sun, and you're watching the PWHPA Secret Dream Gap Tour, the OHL Showcase. We'll be right back after this. It's never too early or too late to ask for help with a drinking problem. Alcoholics Anonymous, there is a way out. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit stoptracktragedies.ca. Adele is one of our current staff members. She had a rough, challenged life, and it was because of your support that made that difference. She is now on the right track, continuing her education, going uh, into a uh, college, looking into the field of child and youth, and it's because you made that difference. So I want you to continue to donate to the United Way. Online betting is booming. But you could also lose. And that's a reality nobody's shouting about. Learn about safer play at knowtherisks.ca. In a society that we were brought up in, it's very hard on little black boys. Sometimes when I cry, I won't know how I'm feeling or why I'm crying. You have to navigate feelings and emotions so the world don't get you. Sonnet's Abby Rock. Abby, thoughts on your team's play in the first 40 minutes? Uh, obviously, a slow start. It wasn't the start we needed or wanted, but I think we did a lot better in a second. Hopefully, we can carry that over to the third and get a couple goals. I would love to have been a fly on the wall after the first period. What was Coach McIntosh's message to you guys after the first? Um, just that we, we had some talks before the game, obviously, and about our season, and we just uh, we didn't cut out doing it. We got a lot better, I think, in the last part of that first period. She just wanted to build on that. Abby, your play, aside from the PWHBA OHL showcase here for Minnesota, has been just as your name suggests, solid like a rock. You've had 13 points in 11 games. To what do you attribute your success? Oh, my play with great people out here. Obviously, uh, we have a lot of great players. I've been getting to play with uh, Brian Jenner the whole year, who I never normally get to play with, and she's been uh, a great person to get to share a line with, and she's been a big uh, help for me. You're still quite a young player, and you have a very long career ahead of you. Do you feel like you're taking on a larger responsibility behind players like Knight and Jenner? Um, obviously, they've done a ton for the sport and just in hockey in general. So, yeah, as you come up and you realize uh, the things that need to grow in women's hockey and all this stuff, I think it's huge for us just to get our players coming up who can take over and hopefully keep building on what they've uh, done here for women's hockey. And what is your game plan moving forward for the final 20 minutes of this game? Uh, hopefully pop some in, get some shots on net. I think uh, we're just building, so hopefully uh, we come up flying for the third. 
Thank you so much, Abby. Good luck the rest of the way. We will be right back after this short break with a feature on Margot Page, who is the head coach at Brock University for the women's team there. The coach, or the score rather, is still 3-0 in favor of Team Adidas. We are at Meridian Center and you are watching your TV Niagara. Do it like this. Catch the PWPHPA Dream Tour in action Friday, February 10th from Peterborough and Niagara right here on your TV. I'm Mayor Matt Sisko. On the very first episode of Talk STC, we speak with the CEO of the First Ontario Performing Arts Centre, Colleen Smith. In addition, we're also going to chat with Rachel Brathwaite from the St. Catharines Downtown Association. Talk STC on your TV. During a routine exam, our daughter's pediatrician detected a heart murmur. We thought an EKG would confirm that we had nothing to worry about, but we were shocked by a diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension. Sorry, we're just with colors and playtime, not medicine time. Pulmonary hypertension is a rare, life-threatening lung disease. There is no cure, but treatments are available. Talk to your doctor about pH if you're experiencing these unexplained symptoms. It could save your life. Family Day is coming up, and we want to send your family on an unforgettable trip to Niagara Falls. Enter now for your chance to win a two-night stay at Great Wolf Lodge. To find out more and to enter, visit your TV on Facebook. Man, it's lonely. I'm going through life lonely. There is the therapeutic aspect of music, just expressing how you feel. I'm going to talk to Howie about his feelings and make it into a song. Worship from home, Sunday mornings. Your TV, truly local, exclusively on Kojiko. many in women's hockey will know. She has won gold medals at the Olympics, world championships, and an OUA championship as the head coach for the Brock women's team. We had a chance to catch up with Margot and talk to her about her career in hockey and the growth of women's hockey. Margot Page is a three-time world champion as a player and an Olympic gold medalist as an assistant coach. But when Margot was growing up, there wasn't any of those things to aspire to those opportunities didn't exist. So what motivated her to play hockey? You played for the game, you played for the fun, your friends, you know, just getting better, learning, playing a sport that you love, just like everybody else. Like, a lot of times now you think you have to have something like that, but you really don't, and I think sometimes we lose sight of it. You play for the love of the game, and we still play for the love of the game. Um, once Worlds and Olympics became a possibility, an opportunity, you know, then it gets a little bit more serious. Then you start, you know, starting to see that you have to train, starting to see that you have to do more if you want to be there. And it's just elevated our numbers in our game and also the talent in our game. It's, it's pretty amazing now. What is your favorite memory in hockey? Um, I think a couple ones. You have to not add in there that it's you know our very first gold for Team Canada in 1990 when we won that world championship that was pretty huge right but I also look back with Brock University and we just won an OUA championship last year and being a coach in that format was was pretty cool I think the other thing is um, being with our national team and now I was a coach with the national team at the Olympics in 2006 is winning a gold and seeing those players that you played with going and being successful there and you as the coach helping guide them that way that was pretty neat as well but honestly the big picture of all of it is when you start seeing players graduate and you see them being really empowered young women that have a voice that have confidence and are getting careers and to me that's probably the most valuable thing you see and they come back and and they thank you for it that's the memory that you kind of 
you remember all those other things but that one like it just goes straight here and that's a warm fuzzy in your heart forever right the other things are just medals now that there is the olympics and the women's world championship what kind of impact do you think that has on the game for women it's huge just on the opportunity aspects of it because now you have provincial championships you know you have specific training you have better coaching you have better administration you're starting to get more money with that opportunity and because of that you also you know have have those ambitions and the motivators to be able to get there where you know a kid who is a young girl who is you know six years old and their parents are watching the olympics that girl wants to now go so they do everything possible to get there right and what's the biggest difference that you see in women's hockey today from when you played I, I just think there's so many good female hockey players out there and there's so much opportunity for them to play sky's the limit right like before there would be you know a handful of really talented players now man every country is starting to develop great great uh, players great teams you know US Canada Sweden Finland like even the China's and you know the Switzerland's and all of those are they're just continuing to get better and I just think the future is really really promising do you think that that growth has a lot to do with the fact that this game is now more televised it's more known it, it's getting out there for more people and now there's also a professional women's hockey league in the PWPHPA yeah and even even that like when you look at exposure like the exposure is key because before you would see us every four years at the Olympics when everybody would be watching go man that's good hockey but then you'd try and start a pro league or try and start something more for women and it wasn't there so the the exposure of that like with any sport for women in sport any sport that you're talking about whether it be soccer basketball or hockey is huge and the PWHPA is, is one of them right there's still a pretty big gap between the men's game and the women's game as far as exposure and the financing and everything else what area do you think that people need to concentrate on to, to close that gap a little bit more? Hmm. I, I think it's just being thoughtful in what, what the needs are. Like, I think a lot of people are forgetting that we don't need an NHL league. We want opportunity, and I think if everybody kind of looks at how we can actually make that happen, it's so much better instead of poo-pooing all the different things that are out there and saying, oh, women can't do this or we can't do that. Like, let's put our heads together and let's somehow make a viable league where players can get paid. Um, they can get paid a living wage. They can train. They can enjoy just like everybody else does. And it's not just the NHL leagues that are getting played. There's so many opportunities for men in professional hockey. Why can't there be that opportunity for the women? And I think people just have to look beyond the, oh, it's women and we're okay. No, someone has to step forward and say, this isn't ex is not acceptable and we have to make those moves forward and we have to challenge them and I think that's why I'm constantly talking to my athletes as to what can you do now to elevate the game not just from a playing standpoint but getting out in administrative roles and 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 marketing it and supporting females so like we will be at the showcase game we, we're going to be there as a team because we want to support it and I think that's what's so important is just getting the mindset change that it has to be this level of hockey to be able to get some sort of payment or sponsorship or something it doesn't need to be it has to be good hockey it has to be enjoyable hockey and women's hockey gives that margot page an absolute hockey icon we will be right back after this short break with uh, your second period scoring summary as well as your highlights you are watching the pw hba secret dream gap tour ohl showcase on your tv niagara Man's lonely. Going through life lonely. There is the therapeutic aspect of music. Alcoholics Anonymous. For more information, visit aa.org.
Alcoholics Anonymous. We're here to help. For more information, visit aa.org and download the Meeting Guide app. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks. And it shattered her world. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Worship from home with the Royal House. Watch Hope for Today, Sundays at 10 a.m. on your TV. Truly local. Exclusively on Cochico. If alcohol builds a wall around you, know this. We are here to help if you want us to. It's never too early or too late to ask for help with a drinking problem. Alcoholics Anonymous, there is a way out. Welcome back to Meridian Center in St. Catharines for your second period scoring summary. There was no scoring in the second period, but we do have some highlights for you. And to break it down for you, I will send it back up to Liz and Izzy. Thank you, Jessica. No scoring, but a much better period by Team Sauna in that one. Yeah, certainly probably the way they wanted to start this game. A little late to the party, but great to see Team Sauna kind of generate some offense and keep the puck out of their net. Well, one person who started it all was Hillary Knight. She started that offense. You can see she's got an extra jump in her step, and we'll look to see maybe a goal from her this period. But we're going to highlight someone else who is at the NHL All-Star Skills Competition. We talked about these girls, but Carpenter, we saw her this morning. Hillary Knight on the ice tonight. Uh, Sarah Nurse was the big story, though, with her goal in the breakaway challenge. Of course, Sarah Nurse, Nurse being a little bit quiet on the score sheet today, but doing a lot of things right. You see her driving wide and finding her way to the center of the net. Stick on the ice getting those chances she creates opportunity for the players around her just some incredible puck possession here in zone head on a swivel and the, a great uh, example I should say of the way that she points her skates in the direction that she believes the puck's gonna go you know she's very agile she's looking ahead of the play and makes her a very anticipatory player one thing that's really dangerous about Sarah Nurse as a defender, she has such deceptive speed. She's able to slow things down with the puck and then just explode. You saw it on that one-on-one -on -one chance. She's just, she's gonna trick goal, goaltenders with that. She's gonna trick D especially. And that's where she gets a lot of her one-on-one -on -one chances. Yeah, she's quite nifty. And having played against her myself uh, back in the CWHL days and more so at practice, I mean, she's got those silky mitts that she sure knows how to use. Well, the other uh, women who were able to join Sarah and Hillary Knight were uh, Rebecca Johnson hit the crossbar and then Emily Clark, who also hit the post in that breakaway challenge. So a good showing for the women at the NHL All-Star Skills Competition. We got 20 minutes of hockey left here in Niagara. The crowd's been great. The atmosphere has been great. We want to give a shout out to the Ice Dogs organization for what they've done here today. What can we expect from the third period? I think more of the same for Team Sonnet. I mean, they're looking to close that gap they did a better job that period of limiting chances on their net and cleaning up those loose rebounds but they've got to find that extra jump on the offense we saw it very well from Hillary Knight getting pucks in behind their Adidas defense and creating chances off that cycle but they've just got to find a way to pot one Erica Howe is going to be a big story too she's looked solid in the second period a couple really big saves that really kept Sonnet in it in the second period and we look to see if she can continue that in this period yeah, just an incredibly resilient mind from Erica Howe. And as we mentioned earlier, a veteran player, you know, able to maintain the focus that it requires to keep her team in this game, even though they went down early by three. But she's certainly been a difference maker in that second period. We're looking to her to continue to give Team Sauna a chance to win. There is plenty of time on the clock for Team Sauna to make a comeback. We've seen it before in the PWHPA. And we'll see if Abby Rock can get things started for Team Sonnet. She does. A master in the face-off circle. Very rarely does Abby Rock lose a face-off. She's going to tip that one on Maddie Rooney. She's going to decide to settle things down early on. And I think if nothing else, if I'm Laura McIntosh, Paul Geiger on the Team Sonnet bench, I'm trying to ingrain habits. I want to make sure that this team is able to be at their peak at the right time of the season when they hit the ice in California. But each of the games leading up to that championship weekend, they need to get better at one spot of their game. They've got some growth ahead of them. They're doing a lot of things right. But to me, the focus right now needs to be on the process. Well, and the good news for Team Sonnet, everybody's going to make the playoffs. We're all going to go to California, and it's 
going to be tournament style once we get there. So one game could make the difference for them as long as they click in California. Thompson now sends the puck in behind Rooney from the red line. Nurse is going to evade Leslie in behind the net. Clean breakout by Adidas, and here comes Amanda Kessel. Kessel, she's got fast going to the net. Now Kessel below the goal line. Stripped of the puck. Here comes Rebecca Leslie on a breakaway. Leslie backhand just misses wide. Loose puck through the crease. And Rock couldn't get the puck before everybody else. Here's Knight in front now. Loose. And a couple good chances. And it all starts with Rebecca Leslie. Now loose puck in the neutral zone. Rock. Back to Zandi Hart. Finds Knight. Knight gets around DiGirolamo, but fast there to clean up the loose puck in the Adidas zone. O'Neill trying to get in behind Thompson. That's a tough task. Gribbins on the second attempt, leaves it for Stacy. Gribbins bouncing puck in the slot. Thompson will pick it up. Gets around Donovan. Thompson. Inside the zone, we'll take a shot on Rooney. She'll send that into the corner. Knight now. Back to Skarupa. Ambrose back door to Brandt. Pass a little too hot on the backhand. And now Willoughby. Breaks out with Gribbins. Gribbins to DiGirolamo. Her shot blocked by Skarupa. It's a sacrifice you need from your wingers in front on the back check. Puck finds its way to DiGirolamo at the point. Sends it to Gribbins. Gribbins cycles down low for Donovan. She can't handle it. Brandt's gonna break out with Knight on the far side. Gribbins is there quick. She moves the puck up to Skrupa. Skrupa off the bench as Vasco picks it up. Couldn't get the shot off. Vasco now down low. Bunton chasing down the puck. Jinsi Dunn hanging on to it. Tries to make a D-to-D -D pass with Mickelson. That one goes through her skates. And now Kogan is centering pass. Buckles from the point. Still loose. Cleared out by Gribbins. And that'll be an icing call against Team Adidas. Good start. Well, it's funny. I went to go turn off the light behind us. And of course, I missed the breakaway chance. Rebecca Leslie, an incredible, incredibly fast player with a nice forehand backhand, looking to go backhand on Maddie Rooney. And Maddie Rooney does a great job just getting a pad on that shot last second. Of course, you saw Hillary Knight with the opportunity on that again. And the pressure keeps coming from this team sauna. So I'd love to see it. There's about 17 minutes left in this period. Lots of time, but they've got to start chipping away at that concrete sooner rather than later. What a tough task to beat Maddie Rooney. Her sixth start this year. And a very talented goaltender lineup for Team Adidas. Willoughby now skating out. Moves it forward. Mickelson again up on offense. Nice. Said that more than once this yeah. game. It's, you know, it's great to see the 37-year-old kind of jumping into the offense here. Not afraid to contribute to her team up front. Nurse playing some defense, able to keep that in at the blue line as she'll switch with Mickelson now. Down low to Potomac. Potomac put into the boards by Rock. Rock wins that battle and is going to move the puck up towards Jenner. She's stopped by Mickelson. Now Adidas with time to break out its nurse. Off the skate is Grupa and now Curlette is going to take a shot from a distance. How able to stop it. Knight picks up the loose puck but it's taken away by Stacy. Now down low. Nurse battling with Thompson. Loose puck comes out and it finds Vespa, but a battle now as Grupa, Brandt, and Knight are threatening inside the Adidas zone. Brandt at the side of the net, taking down, runs into the post. He's able to get back up. And the net stays on the goal line, so we'll keep play moving along as Nurse picks up the loose puck and is going to send it in deep. 
Could be an icing call coming, and it will be, so Nurse will be forced to stay on the ice, and this will be a tired group of Adidas players. And Hannah Brandt with a great chance there at the side of the net. She just gets tangled up in some incidental contact, maybe. She finds her face wrapped around that post. We'll see it here. Good drive to the net. And as you see, Curlett just kind of gets clips the, the back edge of Hannah Brandt's skate. Uh, happy to see her up on her feet. Sonnet wins the draw. Hometown girl of Vasco winning in the face-off draw. Getting some chances in front of Rooney. Now Nurse trying to clear it out. Vasco picks up a loose puck. Quick shot, Matty Rooney stops it, and that'll hit the netting. That'll give Adidas the change they needed. Tucson has done a good job changing up their shot selection, so we're going to see here the puck just kind of floats its way to the net. Sometimes that's the most threatening play because it's tough to ju tough to juggle a bouncing puck. You see a great job there by Team Adidas defense to swipe the puck out of the way. But again, at this point in the game for Team Sonnet, any puck towards the net even is a great opportunity for them to find the twine. Vasco and O'Neill at the faceoff dot. Vasco once again wins that. Kogan with a shot. That one goes wide. Fast. Rims it around to Stacy on the boards. Can't clear it out. Ambrose now with a chance at the blue line. Her shot. Couldn't get a tip. Stopped by Rooney. Stacy moves it to LaRock. That puck just squirts out on her as Rooney will move it out towards the boards and out of the front of her net. D to D pass. Ambrose down low to Rock. Rock makes a nice move. Backhand shot in front. Loose puck in the crease. Cleared out. Ambrose now at the red line. Quickly to Thompson. They'll try to get right back in the zone. 14-10 remaining in the third period. They've got three goals A catch up in this game. Buck is loose in the neutral zone. Jenner looking for it. Makes its way to Buckles. Now does Andy Hart. She'll give it right back to Buckles. Find Leslie at the far blue line. She tips it in. Jenner with speed, trying to put pressure on fast. Now Dossler gives up the puck to Rock. Rock's going to take a quick shot. That one goes wide. Willoughby trying to clear it out. And she will. It's in the neutral zone. Leslie will send it over to Zandi Hart. She's got Buckles with her. And they're going to take refuge behind Howe. Trying to set up a breakout. But that pass is just behind Jenner. Now fast behind Rooney. Finds LaRock to Willoughby. Willoughby clears it out in the neutral zone. Finds Thompson. Willoughby follows up on the play, able to get it back. Thompson poke checks that one away. Brown now with speed. Finds Brandt at the far blue line. Trying to connect with Knight. Heading to the slot. And it's cleared out by Adidas again. And see that Adidas almost is taking a step back in this third period, just sending pucks in deep. Here's yep. Nurse with a giveaway in front. And Skarupa can't beat Rooney. What a great opportunity. Just as we were saying, the team Adidas is almost looking to kill some time on the clock here. A little bit of an unforced there, and uncharacteristic of Sarah Nurse, but she just kind of loses the handle on this one. At least Skarupa with a great opportunity, trying to get Maddie Rooney to open up and slide at 5 well, but Rooney does an athletic job covering the bottom of the ice. And if there's one area right now that I'd like to see Team Sonnet really tighten up, it's their neutral zone. I mean, they seem to have drastically improved their offensive zone possession. Their D zone and their breakouts have also gotten better, but seen a lot of kind of miscommunications or miscues through the neutral zone that extremely threatening against this very fast offensive team Adidas. Makes a huge difference when you can make that first pass tape to tape. There's a chance trying to find a streaking Hillary Knight in behind the D, but Deidre Alamo breaks that up. And now Adidas offside once again. Bit of problem for them this game. You can look at Laura Stacy there. I just uh, actually saw her 
her uncle, former Oakville firefighter in the stands. Uh, her aunts and cousins, nephews. This is, the, I mean, the, it's a family affair here and with such an incredible crowd in St. Catharines, it's nice to have the support for these players who, as you're on tour, I mean, you don't always get to see familiar faces in the stands. A lot of homecoming for these women either in their actual towns. We know Jesse Eldridge will be home in Barrie tomorrow morning. We've got a couple Kitchener players as well as Laura McIntosh from the Kitchener-Waterloo area tomorrow. But a lot of these women are from around these cities that we're visiting in Ontario this weekend. So a lot of family in attendance. It's a little bit more on the line maybe for them. Kogan now moves the puck to Brown at the point. Brown with a quick shot blocked by Donovan. And Mickelson once again jumping up in the play. Moves it to Willoughby. Willoughby to Donovan. Lots of space for Donovan. It's loose. Good save by Howe. Thompson now skating it out of the Sonnet zone. As her teammates change, she's one on four. Puck is going to be stripped away by Kessel. Now Ponomac with speed. Sarah Ponomac looking for the pass to Kessel on the far side. That's blocked. Now Nurse trying to cycle it down low. Good pressure by Leslie. She's had a good game today for Team Sonic. She gets the puck at the far blue line. Lots of pressure from Renata Fast. Try to clear it out. Sandy Hart will keep things alive. Jenner can't handle it. And now LaRock moving up. Putting pressure on Ambrose. Ambrose moves it into the neutral zone. Hits off of Abby Rock's helmet and onto Laura Stacy's stick. She cuts inside. Stacy with a nice pass looking for O'Neill's second. And they couldn't connect. Kristen O'Neill down low for Vespa. Vespa to the point for fast. Long pass to the far side for LaRock. Back door. For O'Neill, that's stopped by Rock. Here comes Jenner. Brianne Jenner trying to get around Stacy, loses the puck. Well, Vespa will pick up the loose puck below the goal line. And that one's going to be put into the stands. Nice memory. And we'll take a quick break. We're halfway through the third period. They're still down by three. It's Team Adidas, Team Sana. You're watching the PWHPA Secret Dream Gap Tour. The OHL Showcase will be right back after this. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit StopTrackTragedies.ca. Online betting is booming! Booyah! Woo! You could win big! But you could also lose. And that's a reality nobody's shouting about. Learn about safer play at KnowTheRisks.ca. Welcome back inside the Meriden Center in St. Catharines. We're going to take a good look. A couple good chances for Team Adidas as Donovan had a wide open area there to shoot. And then Laura Stacy with a nice pass to O'Neill. Yes. That we probably don't see frequently enough. I mean, this is a, a player who's in her third year with the PWHBA, a uh, graduate of Brown University, where she was an academic all Ivy. And somebody who just plays the game very smart. I mean, she, her ho hockey IQ is just at the top of its game. She finds that quiet area of the ice and a great opportunity on net for Sam Donovan. You can get a look there at the Team Adidas bench. We've got Jocelyn LaRock, owner and operator of Stoke Strength Conditioning out here in the Hamilton and Cambridge area. So not too far from here in St. Catharines. I'm sure some of her athletes are St. Catharines Dames themselves. Liz, you told me an incredible story, and it was about Kayla Vespa. She had the first goal of the game, works for the city of Hamilton. We had our Collingwood showcase a couple weeks ago, ended in, in the afternoon and on uh, Sunday, and we all headed to the airport, but she had somewhere else to be. Yeah, Kayla Vespa, an employee of the city of Hamilton, as Izzy just said, and uh, she got the call for overtime as we had quite the dumping of snow on Sunday night. So she went from the PWHPA Secret Dream Gap Tour stop in Collingwood right to Hamilton, where she got in her plow truck and worked an eight-hour overtime shift overnight. 
only to attend practice the next day. So the kind of commitment and work that these players are putting in to make sure that PWHPA is successful and our goals and dreams of creating sustainable leagues so that players don't have to work those second jobs. Hannah Brandt's going to get called two minutes here for tripping as she takes down Laura Stacy along the boards. Switches her stick before she heads off to the penalty box. So we'll get a power play now for Team Adidas. Not what you want when you're down by three. Yeah, somewhat untimely penalty there, but uh, I mean, Hannah Brandt's very strong physical player. I think there may have been a rut in the ice or something there on Laura Stacy because she went down a little easier than we're used to seeing. And unfortunately for Team Sonnet, Hannah Brandt will sit in the box. Quick stop there by Howe, and we're going to get the face off to her left. Interestingly enough, the shots are dead even right now at 22 apiece. The importance of playing a full 60 minutes. They've had good pace in the last 40. Here's a shot and tip in front by Potomac. Fast comes in for the rebound, sends that one high and wide. Now Kessel below the goal line to Fast. Out of Nurse on the far side, Nurse with space. It's gonna delay, looks for options. She finds Potomac in the slot. They send it down low to Kessel. Kessel just settling the puck down as it rolls on her. Now to LaRock at the blue line, just gives it right back. Back door to Fast, that one bounces over her stick. Minute 10 remaining on the power play, Fast. Goes around to the far side, leaves it for Kessel. Now to Nurse at the hash marks. Nurse to the point for LaRock. She's gonna take a quick shot looking for a tip. Nice save by Howe. Nurse to LaRock and Fast. Fast skates it in, just sends it in front. LaRock picks it up to Nurse. Nurse will take a shot, that one's high. And LaRock, good speed, keeps things alive for Team Adidas. 40 seconds remaining on the power play. Ambrose now jumps up. Good stick by her and Abby Rock. They clear it down. Jenner's gonna chase it. She's got room maybe to take that to the net. Quick shot, misses wide. 30 seconds remaining on the power play. Rooney's gonna stop the puck behind her net. Leaves it for Dunn. Dunn's gonna wait for Stacy. Connects with O'Neill on the far side. O'Neill's got Stacy going to the net. Trying to move a pass, stopped by Vasco. Now Kogan chasing it down. She'll battle Mickelson for it. Put into the boards by Mickelson, no call coming. As the crowd doesn't agree. Now Brandt, out of the penalty box, trying to get involved, we're back to five on five. Brown looking for a shot. Good pressure by O'Neill. She sends the puck down low to Brandt. Hannah Brandt, looking for Kogan. O'Neill once again causing trouble in that corner. Now Mickelson comes away with it. Finds Vespa on the far side. Mickelson now on the near side. Tipped by Laura Stacy will send the puck in deep. And they'll get a fresh line out. So no harm, no foul on the Hannah Brandt penalty. And we'll get a quick whistle as Team Ajita's once again offside. We see the physicality continue here in the I'd like to say a little bit of a guilty conscience on Megan Mickelson as you see her take the body into the board and the hands go up in the air. I mean, I'm innocent, coach. What can I do? As Sam Kogan remains on her feet and no call on the play. Megan Mickelson never at fault in a No, penalty. certainly not. Not one you see in the penalty box. <laughs> we saw that great feature on Margot Page at our second period intermission. That's actually, Margot was our, my, one of our coach for a brief time out in Brampton when the CWHL Canadian Women's Hockey League was there. Love to see her continuing to give back to the game at Brock University. Knight with a chance in front. Just misses wide. Now Ambrose at the point. Her shot blocked by DiGirolamo. DiGirolamo trying to clear it out. She's going to follow up the puck and she does get it out of the zone. Through the neutral zone they find Abby Rock on the far side. Looking for Knight in front and it's going to find its way to Rooney. She'll cover up. Uh, just a reminder, tomorrow at 1 p.m., we will be in Barrie, Ontario. The Barrie Colts hosting us. 
And then you'll see Team Sonnet back in action tomorrow night in Kitchener, the Kitchener Rangers hosting us at the auditorium. That game at 6 p.m. So we hope you can join us on Rogers TV as a chance for Thompson and Zandy Hart to connect. Can't beat Rooney. Kessel, now over to LaRock. Good pressure by Leslie, takes the puck away for Sonnet. Thompson wants it as she comes down from the blue line. Finds Zandy Hart. She's gonna use the boards, a nice smart play by Zandy Hart there. She uses the boards for a rebound, but Jenner can't put it in behind. Now Nurse in behind Thompson. Fast is gonna try and keep things alive. The puck goes behind her, but LaRock quick to move it forward for Laura Stacy. Laura Stacy around Thompson. Can't beat Brown. Brown moves it forward to Rock. Abby Rock. Not much time trying to find Jenner. Uses the boards, but Mickelson gets there first. Stacy now with speed in the neutral zone. Forward to O'Neill. We should have counted. It's another <laughs> offside call as Stacy gets a little bit of a laugh. I think that call goes to Buckles on the Team Sonnet Blue Line. Her arm went up quickly to ensure that the Stripes uh, saw that it was just a step offside. Good sign there. I, I mentioned it before, but we're seeing a lot of Sarah Nurse signage here at the Meriden Center. What an inspiration she's become for women in sport. Well, you we mentioned it earlier, too, in our previous broadcast out in Peter Road, but so many of these players giving back to the game, running their own hockey camps, visiting young athletes' practices, tryouts. And so they're very well connected in the community. So not only are these stars that these young athletes look up to on the big screen and on the Secret Dream Gap Tour, but they also may know them from their skill development on the ice. One of the messengers that Sarah Nurse talked about after her you might have seen that she's the cover star of nhl 23 the first female athlete to be on the cover of the nhl franchise of ea sport video game but she mentioned it's not only the the young girls that are looking up to her and, and see that future for themselves but just that the young boys as well are now starting to recognize sarah nurse they're starting to recognize female professional hockey players and that's just what you want. You want equality across the board and it not be such a novelty that there are female professional athletes out there. Yep, and in the, the abbreviated words of the great Billie Jean King, I mean, the crumbs are no longer enough. We want the cake, the whipped cream, and the cherry on top. So it's kind of been our inspiration in the PWHPA, led and advised by Billie Jean King, Alana Kloss, who of course made a similar sacrifice in the tennis world few decades ago now. <laughs> we won't date her. The net is empty. Four minute mark, Erica Howe left her net. And we're gonna try and push for a goal here for Team Sonnet. So six players on the ice as Hillary Knight chases that down. Moves the puck to Rock, back to the point for Zandy Hart. Out of Thompson on the near side. She's gonna send it in front, it's blocked by Curlette. That one hurt. Brant trying to connect with Knight. And it's going to be cleared out, stopped by Thompson. Now Jenner at the hash marks. Moves it forward to Rock. Can't settle the puck down, so they'll send it over to the far side. Zandy Hart now to Brandt, who's helping out at the blue line. Down low for Knight. Hillary Knight gets put into the boards by Deidre Alamo. Adina's trying to clear it out. Jenner, though, picks up the loose puck. Finds Zandy Hart, she'll take a nice shot. That one's high and wide. Jenner along the boards. The puck is bouncing quite a bit on the girls. Yes, getting a little choppy here in the last few minutes of the third period. Brock cycles down low to Brand. Looking for Knight as Liz Knox joins for the second time today, the wave in house. And then Maddie Rooney makes a nice save. 2.20 remaining. And you just can't let the wave pass you by. You know, you gotta live in the moment here at the Meridian Center. We're gonna take a look at these couple of these chances on net. Great shot from the point. Maddie Rooney able to track it through traffic. And Hannah Brandt in front, just licking her lips, waiting for that rebound, but 
Faulkner scoops it up, says no. A timeout called by Team Sonnet. They'll try to draw something. Uh, you got to give credit to Team Sonnet. You know, they have a bad first period. They come out maybe not what they wanted, but they've done really well in the last 40 minutes, and they really want to get a goal today for the fans here in Niagara. Yeah, and I'm sure the focus, of course, is on this next two and a half minutes almost. Laura Mack is drawing up some offense. They're going to move the puck on. Open some scenes, certainly get bodies in front of the eyes of Maddie Rooney. But the takeaway message here is you have to play the 60 minutes. I mean, Laura McIntosh headed back to Kitchener Waterloo area where she grew up, where she runs Laura McIntosh development. A lot of her young athletes will be out to watch that game, and you can guarantee the message will be 60 minutes or flop because we can see in this game taking a few shifts off can. Did quite the hole for Team Sun here, but nevertheless, two and a half minutes to go. See if they can't get the team on the board. They've lost their last six, nine out of ten. They're looking for a goal to end this one on a positive note. Sarah Nurse tries to clear it out. She gets a lucky bounce off the boards. And here's Stacy with a wide open net. She tries to move it to Vespa to give her her second goal of the game. That'll give time for Thompson to reset. Now Ambrose tonight. Knight will tip it in. Rooney's going to try and clear it out. It hits off of Knight. And they can't settle things down. It's going to be cleared out. Sandy Hart has to play off the referee there. Dodger, but because she's too nice to get mad at the referee, so she just skates the puck back to her. And you know what? I actually love that play from Laura Stacy. You know, certainly with the open net, she's got the speed to take the puck and get a shot on, but Kayla Vespa was such a breakout game here today. Been fortunate to watch her play and grow in her post-college career. And I know that Laura Stacy is looking her to pad the stats there a little bit on what's surely been one of her best games of this PWHPA Secret Dream Gap Tour. Well, Sonnen's gonna look to clear this out quickly as Howe is already skating to the bench. Vasco will dump it in deep as she gets over the red line. Done, trying to clear it out quickly. It's stopped at the blue line by Ambrose. Now a quick shot from Skorupa stopped by Rooney. Mickelson trying to pin that puck along the boards. O'Neill digs it out, sends it over to the far side. Ambrose coming down from the blue line. Battling for the puck at the goal line. Vasco gets hit. Kogan now finds it in her skates. Last minute of play in the third period. Still an empty net for Team Sonnet. Sandy Hart keeps things alive. You can see Hillary Knight just inching to get back on the ice. And she will with speed. Vasco sends it in deep. Here comes Hillary Knight. DiGeralmo gets there first. Trying to clear it out. It's at the hash marks. Vasco will take a shot. Blocker saved by Rooney. 30 seconds. Thompson. Moves it down to Knight. Knight tries to quickly fool Rooney. Back to the point now. Sandy Hart, and it's going to be broken up by Willoughby. 15 seconds. Willoughby with an open net. She scores! And that'll do it for Team Adidas. Their fourth of the game. And Caitlin Willoughby, the operating room. She just finds a way to put pressure on. A great job in her own zone, putting pressure on that team on a defense. She wins the foot race here. Well, I mean, it's a good battle. She has a little bit of a jump on Claire Thompson and just sneaks it in that near side post to seal the deal for Team Adidas. 10 seconds left in this one. The crowd is happy with what they saw on the ice. Caitlin Willoughby gets the fourth for Team Adidas, and they'll remain in second place and start to create a separation between them and Team Scotiabank. Scotiabank fell earlier today, 5-2 to Team Harvey's. And that'll do it. Abby Rock wins the last draw. It's a tough stretch for Team Sonic. They got another chance tomorrow in Kitchener at 6 p.m. 
And a fun fact for those who didn't see on Twitter, the site where Hillary Knight scored her first international goal at the U18s was at the auditorium in Kitchener. We'll see if that inspires her to get one for Team Sonnet tomorrow night. Couple, couple big matchups against Mars, you mentioned. Uh, Team Adia is looking to solidify their spot in that second position in the four team standings. Every point matters, and this was a huge three points for Team Adidas as they look to edge the gap away from Team Scotiabank. Well, we're going to get the three stars here soon. Extremely proud. Well, again, a reminder, 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. tomorrow, we'll wait for Jessica to connect with Kayla Vespa on the ice for your player interviews. But they're going to say thank you to the crowd here in Niagara. And a great crowd that was. Over 4,000 tickets sold. It's our largest attendance so far this season on the tour and you can see the fans all around the rink waiting to get a picture or just get all that closer to their superstar female hockey players here's your schedule tomorrow team harvey's and team adidas your top two teams in the league at 1 p.m tomorrow that's in barry jesse eldridge making her hometown debut in professional women's hockey and then team scotiabank and team sonnet will face off in kitchener ontario at 6 p.m so a lot more hockey to go at the ohl showcase in the pwhba secret dream cup tour and a lot more hockey to look forward to the rest of the year we've got tampa bay washington and california yeah, this has been a first for the PWHPA, joining the OHL and visiting these four amazing cities. The hosts have been fantastic, and I couldn't be more happy with the crowd that we had here today and in Peterborough. My hat's off to these two fantastic organizations for all of your hard work and, of course, the people working behind the scenes to make it happen. A huge thank you to your TV, who's been your broadcast provider today in Peterborough and here in St. Catharines. And again, tomorrow, a lot more hockey. Check the PWHPA website for more information on our schedules. If you can join us in person in Tampa Bay, Washington, or California, we hope to see you there. We're going to join Kayla Vespa with Jessica at ice level. Thank you.
you so much, ladies. And actually, it's not Vespa. We are joined with our player of the game, Maddie Rooney. Maddie, a 25 save shutout. Now, that is amazing on a normal day against a normal team, but you did it against some of the best women's hockey players in the entire world. How did you do it? Honestly, it was just a great team win. I mean, you saw the rebounds out there, and my D were there to pick them up, and I thought we really took it to them with our speed and got pucks out when needed to. Well, as they say, a goalie is only as good as the defense in front of them, so tell me a little bit about what they did for you here tonight. Yeah, I mean, just like I was saying, they cleared the rebounds, um, chip pucks off the wall to get out of the zone when needed, and they just had my back when I, when I needed them most. So obviously on your team today and all of the other teams within the showcase, it's Canadians and Americans on the same team. But how do games like this prepare you for the rivalry showcase games coming up at the end of the month? Yeah, um, playing in these games, I mean, the compete level is just so high and playing with the Canadians and against them and my own national team teammates, it just was really setting us up for that intense environment that we're going to see here coming up in February. I have to ask you one more question just about the crowd in here today. 4,301 people in this building. It was absolutely electric. I could barely hear myself think throughout the entire game. How did you feel about it? Honestly, I couldn't even hear the whistles at some point. Um, it was great to see the youth girls teams here. Definitely heard the screams and it was just a fun and great environment to play in. Maddie, thank you so much. Congratulations on your shutout tonight and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. I will send it back up to Liz and Izzy to wrap things up for us. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jessica, and thank you to Maddie Rooney, our second star of the game, earning a shutout today for Team Adidas. A big win for them to maintain their second place in the standings and a confirmation of how large of a crowd we had here today, 4,300 fans in attendance. We can't thank you enough, St. Catharines. You showed up, and we had a lot of fun. Thank you to everybody in the truck at your TV. My name's Izzy Germain. On behalf of Liz and I, we thank you, and we'll see you tomorrow in Barrie. Have a great night, everyone. Oh, Max, you broke it.